are we are live right now. So we are live. Who is that person next to you in that photo, uh, Dan Aguirre? Which photo? <laughs> what the fucker? <laughs> what the fucker? That's that uh, that lady, the the lady that I told you about. That's her. Oh, she's not very ladylike. She uh, she she talks filthy and she loves to fuck. <laughs> fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. She's never saw a dick that she didn't think she could suck off. <laughs> she's well, like if it's, case... <laughs> she, she likes it veiny. Uh, uncircumcised. What are the other conditions you've seen? I on? have no conditions anyway. It's fine with me. No <laughs> conditions. None. Have you ever seen a dick that you thought, ooh, that's nasty? <laughs> Probably not. I don't know. I don't know. You've seen a lot of dicks. Right? I've seen a lot of dicks. I don't know. <laughs> you work in a hospital or something? No, I, she's just a whore, man. I don't think I can pick your dick out of a lineup right now. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, she's, she's okay. She's okay, everybody. Cliff uh, was going to go watch the Swifty show, but he says Swift can't compete with this. There's going to be somebody that says every time Dan's on, they talk about dicks. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he's right. He's right. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be a wild, wild, wild show. I've told people already in the chat room to please don't refer to me as aldo gandia i want to be known tonight as uh dan shortino <laughs> the other dan <laughs> just in case i reveal something uh to nikki that i don't want my wife to know oh yeah. Ooh. So people Ooh. will say oh that daniel Sh shortino man he, he said he wanted <laughs> to have sex with nikki <laughs> So, yeah, Mrs. Uh, Gandhi is not a fan of some of our content. <laughs> no, she's not. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Jay Grizz, we're going to do the proper uh, introduction of Nikki in just a few minutes. We're going to roll the open and uh, have probably the wildest Bear Their Soul show in quite some time. Johnny Santucci will join us in about an hour. But let's get to the open and uh, take it from there. Put the children to bed. It's time for Dan and Aldo to bear their souls. I love the Chicago Bears more than I do masturbating, and that is a lot. Then, with three seconds left, Bob Avellini throws a 30-something yard touchdown pass to Greg Latta, and the Bears win, and I literally shit my pants. I swear to God, I literally did. <laughs> Eric Kramer, for me, I love the guy. He's a tragic figure. I mean, he embodies all that is. If they don't run the ball here, I'm going to vomit. I swear to God. Look, I don't mean any disrespect. He just didn't play that well. Not for a guy of his caliber. You know, they won, but I'm, I'm going to be miserable all week because they stunk. I don't, I don't really have any recollection of that at all, but I guess perhaps I blacked it all out. So, Dan, tape is the ultimate tool for scouts and for coaches to evaluate players, to detect plays and so forth. And they spend hours looking at tape, right? Why do they so often get shit wrong? I love the efficiency of bourbon. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan and Aldo. Welcome, everyone, to a fresh edition of Bear Their Souls. That is not John Santucci in the middle of the screen. It is the lovely Nikki. I don't even know your last name. Nikki, uh, can you reveal that? Yes, Nikki Stout. Nikki Stout. So, for those of you who do not know, it's going to soon be Dan Stout. 
because the two of these are going to be able to come up one day. <laughs> or <laughs> Nikki <laughs> Aguirre. Nikki Aguirre, you like that? It's got a nice sound to it. I think, like Nikki? it. It does sound good. It's like a porn name. It sounds really good. I like it. <laughs> All right. But we have so much to share with our audience about you and Dan. And we're going to do a little game show and find out a little bit more about the two of you. But uh, when both of you, Dan and Nikki, just share the story about how you first met, when you first met, and how you're back together again. Okay, you know, you go. You do this one. You're good at it. All right. So there was this girl named Heather, and I won't say her name because uh, she died of a drug overdose, like so many people here. But she was she was very preppy, you know, Aldo, the kind of, like, would never listen to the mu music I listened to. But she goes, oh, my God, I saw this girl who had that Marilyn Manson guy. I saw he, she was wearing his shirt. And so I was like, hey, my friend, my friend likes Marilyn Manson. Can I get your number? Oh, and I was like, are you for real? She's like, yeah. So I, I got you this girl's number. She says she has a boyfriend. But she said to go ahead and call her. So I was like, well, fuck, I'll call her. I know even then I'd only fucked one other woman first before her. But I still thought, I was like, man, if they give me a chance to talk, I'll talk their draws off. <laughs> I, I knew it. If I can get you talking, that's that's where I'm going to get my dick sucked there. So I call her up on the phone, and it's like three hours later, and we're like, all right, we got to go. It's a goddamn school night or whatever, so we got we to go to sleep, you know? But anyway, here's the, the heart of the story. So Marilyn Manson brings us together. This is true. Uh, she had a C-band satellite dish, Aldo, the one that's bigger than your house. You remember those old satellite dishes? Absolutely. She didn't have MTV on that, but had MTV too. But the mm -hmm. MTV Video Music Awards was on MTV, so she went to her neighbor Sherilyn's house to watch it. But Manson played a few minutes after 11. So her mom was like, it's 11 o'clock, it's a school night, get your ass home. So she goes home, and she can't watch it. So she calls the new boy that she just met. She knows I'm watching that motherfucker. So she <laughs> listens to it over the phone while we're, 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 and I was like, I'll bring you a VHS copy of it tomorrow morning at school. And that I was in. I brought he that. Was, he was in. I was so wet after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the David guy, that was her, her boyfriend at the time. He, he was... Uh, he was a horrible redneck. Well, anyway. What was his name again? I don't even remember. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so he was gone, man. He was out within a month or so. So, Nikki, what was your first impression when you saw Dan? Oh, my God. I was like, I am rocking his six foot five world. <laughs> Pretty good. And how, how long before that happened? <laughs> um, our first date was October 3rd mm -hmm. of 1997. And... Well, we we did stuff that day too. Yeah, but the first time, like Dick in the pussy, like we're not. Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to sound like Bill Clinton with Monica here, you know. Like I do not have. Some, <laughs> yeah, okay. So we had done some some oral and stuff, but the first time I was like, "Oh boy, I'm in the pussy now." Um, was mm -hmm. October nineteenth of nineteen ninety seven. So it was basically uh, two weeks later, sixteen days. We went on a date on a Friday, and then two weeks later on a Sunday. That's when uh, she got on top of me. I was on a waterbed. She pushed me back down because I, I had never come in a vagina before with the first lady I was with because I was so afraid of pregnancy, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, plus, I it was using condoms and all these, like, things that you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to do. I advocate you doing, but I can't feel anything with those. So she throws me down, and there's no condom. She's like, I got this. I got this. She's like, I, I'm on the shot or whatever the fuck, and then pushes me down, and I'd never come in a vagina before. And like four minutes later, I did. <laughs> and I felt like Steve Carell at the end of The 40-Year-Old Virgin when they're singing Let the Sun Shine In. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, that's how great it felt. It was like losing the virginity all over again. I did actually say, I got this, and pushed him back on the bed. And yeah, I was like, I, was like, I got this. And I she got had this. it, too. She had it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Is that pretty much how you remember it, Nikki? Yeah, completely. Yeah. <laughs> He's got incredible memory, doesn't he? He does. He does. It's impressive. That is very impressive. Uh, what are you incredible at, Nikki? <laughs> I got a feeling I know the answer to this. <laughs> what am I incredible at? Yeah, he's got an incredible recall. What do you What do you think? Hey, I'm I'm really fucking good at this. 
<laughs> well, you know, I mean, obviously. <laughs> Can I answer it when I said fucking? <laughs> yes, yes, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> oh, gosh. We are uh, just getting started with our uh, talk with Nikki. Nikki, uh, Dan and I are going to talk a little bit bears, and then we'll bring you back. We'll play our game show, and we'll talk about whatever comes to mind, okay? Sounds great. All righty. That is Nikki Stout. What a great name. Um, let me see if I find that's, my That's shot. like I, when I'm finished with her, when I'm like, look, I've already come, so I'll kick her off the bed. So it's, it's what we're doing right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> and today is the anniversary of Jay Cutler being traded to the oh, Chicago man. Bears. I wanted to bring this up to you because I know – you know, your recall is tremendous, as we just said. What do you recall about that day? How excited were you? Did Nikki make you more excited or the st- the trade for Jay Cutler make you more excited? The Jay Cutler trade made me more excited. <laughs> Sorry. No, man, I, I obviously Nikki, but man, I'm wearing the Cutler jersey today because it's mm-hmm. April 2nd. And again, when that trade happened, because there was talk of him going to Washington at the time, too. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, the Bears will never make a bold move like that because, you know, we're the Bears. We never take swings and shit. Like, then the, the news comes down. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, within the hour, I had a jersey ordered. And how many Cutler jerseys? I know you had four Fields jerseys, four or five. I had all the Cutler ones, too. Of course, D- Ooh, no, let's not say his name. I don't want to slander anybody. My shitbag cousin stole... Uh, Because I had all elite ones and authentics and stuff. I have them back now for the most part, but it's still the ones I had before were priceless. But I've got the 1940s throwback one, uh, the Navy one, but my Navy one now is the Reebok one that they had when Cutler was with us in 09, 10, and 11 with the TV numbers in the sleeve versus the shoulder. Because when Reebok t- or Nike took over in 12, they moved the TV numbers up to the shoulder. Anyway, I've got the old school Reebok authentic one. The 1940s uh, throwback Nike one, uh, the white authentic Nike one, and the orange Reebok one. Wow, Jesus! <laughs> and I shout out really to remember. Phil. Let's shout out to Phil. Let's be like completely. Like, I want to give him a uh, Phil wow. uh, a Toshin sent me. He had oh. the orange authentic Cutler one. And I, I think he liked Jay. I, I didn't know Phil yet. You know, I think he liked Jay too. Oh, yeah. yeah, but he sent me that one because like Phil and I were friends for a while, you know, and I, I think, you know, where Jay was gone uh, and, and I'll keep it. I'll keep it. It's it's not big enough for me. So I was not trying to be funny. Phil and I are, are different body types, but uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. So I've got the one Phil sent me too, and I'll cherish it, you know. Didn't you get a number 22 jersey or was that Phil? Phil Phil wore number 22 in college. Yeah, Phil wore 22 in school. Yeah. And uh and that was for Tay's number and Dave Dewerson's. So, but I don't have a 22 jersey. Okay. So, your thoughts about Cutler and uh, but uh, how disappointing was his career as a bear for you? You know, were, were you one of those guys sort of like myself? I can understand why he didn't play his best because they Cubs the Bears didn't support him like they are now the next quarterback. Uh immediately getting help on the offensive line and getting wide receiver help that kind of left him out there to get his ass kicked. And it wasn't until three or four years later after he was a bear that they started to figure, maybe we need to get him some weapons. <laughs> yeah, it just it felt like, you know, at one point he was like 27 and 10 as the bear starter. Mm-hmm. And he finished 51 and 51, as everybody points out. And like, ah, oh, he just is so mediocre. You know, he'll break your heart. And it's so fitting he finishes at 500. For his detractors, that is. Uh, mm-hmm. For Jay, again, 09, uh, you know, he's got Erlacher like ripping him the whole time because he's out since week one and and divisive. And, you know, Jay threw like 26, 27 touchdowns that year, but he had like 24, 25 picks, something like that. The next year, we're in the we're in the NFC Championship game. And it just felt like uh, this dude's going to get us their Super Bowl, man. And, uh, you know, as, as we all know, Jay got hurt in the title game. And uh, we lost to Green Bay 21-14. The next season, you know, we're seven and three. Jay breaks his thumb. That's the end of the season. The next year, we're seven and one and finished 10 and six. Don't make the playoffs after Green Bay lost to Minnesota, intentionally, mind you. And then they beat Minnesota in the wild card like 37 to three. But they didn't try that last game. If they'd have won, the Bears would have made the playoffs. But that's typical Packer bullshit. 
But by that time, that's when they hired Tressman after that. And Cutler was putting up good stats, but the defense was just de deplorable. <laughs> Two straight years of the worst defense they'd ever had it until we got the pervert <laughs> from, you know, uh, well, we won't, you know what I'm talking about. The guy who just resigned uh, last oh, yeah. season. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Alan Williams. Alan Williams. <laughs> right. Alan Williams, the pervert or the alleged pervert. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the 13 and 14 years were horrible on defense. And then Jay in 15 is still having a great year with uh, Adam Gase as the offensive coordinator. And you think, okay, if we can just get the defense back in order, maybe he's still young enough to do something. And then in 16, like it just like he got hurt again and and that was it. I mean, so yeah. there's so much potential. So much potential and like hope. And it just never came into fruition, unfortunately. But I love the guy. He had a fucking arm. He had balls. Like he, he wasn't afraid to take chances. He'd run your ass over. People like, you know, didn't realize how tough he was, you know, and he was just courageous. And he's like the opposite of Mitchell Trubisky. After yeah. uh, Trubisky got hurt, he was afraid to run. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, he wasn't a great runner like Justin Fields was a great runner. Right. But Jay could get it done if he had to. And he Lower had a great, shoulder and, yeah. and get the first down or get the touchdown, yeah. Yeah, and he, he, he'd throw the ball in tight windows. The dude always thought he could get it done. And mm -hmm. that's part of the battle. That was Jim McMahon's, like, biggest, like, attribute that was successful is he always believed he could do it. I mean, and... You win 28 straight games, you prove you can do it. But part of that is that moxie, you know, that you're like, dude, I can, I can fucking do this. And we've had a lot of quarterbacks that know they can't. Let's be honest. They know that they can't make that throw. It's true. It's very, very true. But I know a lot of people didn't like Jay. He wasn't like, you know, there's the story where some dude was pissing beside him. He was like, dude, I went to Vanderbilt with you. And he's like, so? <laughs> like, don't care. <laughs> don't care. He's like, I don't give a shit of what you have to say. So, again, but when he become a dad and he was married to Kristen Cavallari, it's like, you know, he, he sort of softened his, uh, you know, he wasn't as, as, as salty with people. Mm -hmm. And I think working with Waddle and Sylvie helped him a lot, too. Yeah. I, I You know, I think he, he realized that his pro football career was going to end and that the only thing that interested him was doing media work. So he had to change his, you know attitude a bit who's the former uh green bay packer receiver uh sterling sharp brother yeah. of uh, shannon. shannon sterling would never talk to the media after a bears packer game i'm not talking to anybody and so forth he was an asshole to the media so i was shocked when he got a job at i think it was his first gig was at espn and i i always regretted that because you know, I wish if you're going to if you have plans to work in the media as a player, you should at least treat the media respectfully. But uh, at least that's how I thought back then. Now, I'm, I'm not so sure. <laughs> ZZT says, although I'm late in the background, is that dad's girlfriend? Yes, it is. ZZT, ZZT well, has a couple of aliases. Anyways, you were saying I was going to ask you, I gave you my thoughts on Jay. I know yours wasn't they weren't so bright and uh rose covered rose colored glasses when the trade happened i didn't know you yet but i know from hearing you talk off but tell us what you thought about this situation i was not happy with the trade I, you know i saw I, I guess he had played two seasons with the broncos and i just saw this guy's attitude and i was like fuck this guy man he's always you know it looks like he's upset with his receivers or with somebody on the sideline you know he just had that attitude but like any diehard uh sports fan you trade for the guy and then you you start to kind of change your mind and tr try to talk yourself into this guy could be the guy i was the same when when the uh bulls traded or signed dennis rodman it's like this guy was a fucking menace to our side for right. years and he's a dirty player why are you bringing him in i didn't understand that at all but you know they won 72 games that season, an NBA record. I was like, hey, Robin, way to go, man. He brought a Didn't lot of Golden excitement. State break that? Uh, you're right. Uh, I think they had they got 74. I think they were 74 and 8. Yes. Yeah, something like that. But not the uh, – they they didn't – the Warriors didn't go on and continue to win in the playoffs like the, the Bulls did. I think the Bulls only lost one or two games in the playoffs that year. 
So I but, think I could be wrong. Is that the year Golden State had a three-one lead on the Cavs and lost the finals? Yes. Yep. So that's yeah, it. that's the only time LeBron won in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, one so, thing we should mention about Jay real quick, though. I know you've yeah. acknowledged this before. His last season in Denver, when everyone's like, ah, dude, he looks so fucking unhappy all the time. He didn't know it yet. He had type 1 diabetes and was that losing true. weight. He was yeah. losing weight and, and like, he was benching. Like, when he was at the combine, dude was, like, maxing out, like, 225 on the bench press. Like, like wide receivers, you know, he was, I mean, he was a quarterback. And suddenly he couldn't even do the bench press, and he had no idea what was wrong with him. And after the season, they determined he was a type 1 diabetic. So he was... You know, again, not feeling well too. So, but again, that behavior did continue in Chicago at first. Yeah, when knew. the when the barroom uh, first started, we had a website. I wrote an article about his diabetic condition and what happened in Denver, and so I looked at things through a different lens because I did learn, you know, that he was unaware of his diabetic condition, and then I read the symptoms of having diabetes, and one of the things is you're irritable. You get annoyed quickly, and so it described him to the T. And so I maybe when that guy <laughs> was taking a piss alongside him, uh, maybe his blood sugar was off or something. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. Jay Jay had to take his blood sugar like every fucking quarter on the sidelines and, yep. and regulate that during a game. That's a yep. tremendous task to ask for somebody who's trying to figure out what the defense is doing and what we're doing and oh by the way am i okay me- uh, physically or mentally mm-hmm. i mean he's a tough he's a tough fucking guy man there's no doubt he's a about tough it guy. It's just too bad that the bears couldn't we could say it was his fault the front office's fault it's just too bad that they couldn't he had all the tools to be the guy we wanted him to be mm-hmm. and some it, it, he let us down we let him down you know? Yeah, I totally agree with that. I, you know, that whole incident when he was accused uh, by fans and people in the media of him faking the knee injury against the Packers. That's bullshit. That was reprehensible, man. You know, and especially for former players to be saying that on, on television. That was just bullshit. I can understand an asshole like Jason Whitlock, the uh, sports reporter. Right, who right. This is always trying to find things to complain about. He, he's like a Skip Bayless. I can understand. He's like a bad guy wrestler. Right. Exactly. That's exactly it. But for Maurice Jones, Drew, and other players to say that, uh, it's just, come on, get the fuck out of here. The guy played this yeah, hard. Fuck up. Maurice Jones, Drew. Let me just Did say he that. Tell her, like, get a ruptured testicle or something? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's the story, like, I've told before. And, again, it was on FM radio. It's not like I made this up or I was a beat writer or something. Well, he was doing Waddle and Sylvie. Uh, he was on there every week, you know, and mm-hmm. this is the year that Josh McCown was playing well in 2013. So obviously Jay feels pressure to get back on the field because Josh is balling, right? Right. But against Washington, he tore his testicle. Like he tore his fucking ball. <laughs> I mean, so he said it was called a harp machine and that mm-hmm. he was taking injections in his balls. They would draw blood from his balls spin the platelets and re-inject him in the balls. He was taking two shots in the balls every day. He came back from a torn testicle in less than a month. Wow. I mean True I, story. I, I once got hit in the in the face with a hockey stick and I think I cried for three days. <laughs> no fucking way I, I could, you know, have one of my testicles blow like that. I fucking panic and think I lost my shit. What the hell? But that guy is he's a tough motherfucker, there's no doubt about it. I'll never forget yeah. him lowering his shoulder and scoring a touchdown against the Vikings. Oh, against uh, Harrison Smith. That's the yes. same guy, I believe, that hit Trubisky dirty. Right. That's right. Yeah, but yeah, he ran over Harrison Smith and scored, man. That was great. Loved it. Buckmeister says he's had an enlarged testicle for 20 years because I won't let a needle near it. <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom. Uh, what about okay so another thing i want to talk to you about uh from yesteryear but it just happened recently i guess one of the shows on barstool stool barstool sports uh one of the uh, guys was interviewing cole Komet. one of their shows somebody's interviewing cole Komet. there was three guys there and they're talking about walter payton versus barry sanders it's a clip i saw on x and the guy who hosts co-hosts the show, I guess he he does fantasy sports for Barstool. He says, you know, Sanders was better because 
Peyton wasn't much of an athlete. So after like wow. 15 seconds of me being pissed off, I said, I got to share this with Dan Aguirre because Dan will give us like all the details of how athletic uh, Walter Peyton was. Go ahead. Well, the thing, it's like this bias, the, and I'm assuming, I don't know, I'm assuming the guy that said this on Barstool was probably born in 1990, whatever the fuck. He, he looked like somebody that may have been born this century, yes. Yeah, in the 2000s. So people like that, uh, you know, they didn't see him play, and they don't care about old games, and they don't do their research. I'm going to use the Aaron Rodgers' quote, do your research. Do your research. And I'm saying that facetiously. Come on, dude. How can you say Walter Payton is not athletic? I know. he. First off, he. And, I don't want to take anything away from Barry. All right? Barry was great. And had Barry broken Walter's NFL all-time leading rusher uh, record, I would have felt like, okay, okay. When Emmett Smith did it, I was pissed off because Emmett had five offensive linemen that made the Pro Bowl every year. And as soon as those linemen got old, he fucking his his uh, he went from like fourteen hundred yards to like seven hundred immediately. Like Emmett mm -hmm. Smith was really really overrated, in my opinion. Uh, in terms of not being, a, he's a great back, but I mean he's not. Uh, he, when he broke Walter's record, I thought uh, he's on a great team. That's what led him to breaking that record. Versus Walter, who didn't have a Pro Bowl lineman. In, this is a stat Barstool needs to hear. Walter never had an offensive lineman that was a Pro Bowler in front of him until his eleventh season that was 1985 and by that time the bears were the best team in the league and and darlings of the media so they were getting all kinds of hype but before that he played 10 seasons without a pro bowl lineman and suffice to say he was also the 1977 nfl mvp with nearly 2,000 yards and 14 fucking games oh no no 77 12 games right Love games, that's right. Or is it 14? Yeah, because it went to 16 and 78. Okay, right. so it was 14 games. 14 games, okay. he had almost 2,000 yards. And the dexterity, this is the play I told you about immediately. There was a play where he gets knocked out of bounds and does a somersault like a ballerina. Look mm -hmm. at this. Look at this shit. <laughs> I remember seeing this live. Oh, my, my God. God. I mean, every guy on the team, even the special teamers in the NFL, are talented, mm -hmm. physically gifted, extreme athletes. But I bet you there's like two or three guys on the team that could do that. Yeah. What Walter just did there. That was beauty. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I'm not sucking the guy's dick here. I'm just saying that dexterity, that, that balance, everything he just did proves he's a great athlete. And then, oh, by the way, his statistics prove that. And all of his highlights and all of his games. So, yep. hey, if that guy wants to be ignorant, and, and I'm not saying he's dumb overall, but if he wants to have an ignorant opinion, then have at it, Hoss. But otherwise, do your research. You'll see that your opinion is completely gratuitously wrong. Yeah, and maybe he has done it since because he was scorched on social media. Should have maybe been. he has done the research. And so what he needs to do if he hasn't is – do an apology and try to make that go viral too. So to say, try to save some face because that's absolutely one of the worst takes ever. I don't care if it's an old person's take or a young person's take or whoever's take, that's just an idiotic statement. And right. you shouldn't go out on the limb and say something like that. Like I'm going to go out on the limb and talk about some potential draft picks, you know, so take that all with a grain of salt, everybody. I'm not a draft scout by any means. But that guy, you know, if he's doing a show for a highly visible uh, network like Barstool Sports, he should do some research, like you said. What well, it reminds me of the the debate we can't get away from in the NBA, like the LeBron versus Jordan. Mm -hmm. It would be like one of the guys that are pro LeBron that never saw Jordan play, except in yes, highlights. Exactly. I mean, that's exactly what we're dealing with. It's just recency bias. Yes. Yes. Thank you. But if it's recency. I'm surprised he saw Barry though. Yeah. Well, and, 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 maybe he's from Detroit. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Well, Barry's been gone since, what, 99 was his last yeah, year? Yeah, a long time. He probably never saw Barry either. He's just going off of what he has heard. The last him. time Barry That's... played out was fucking Nikki the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. So it is uh 30 minutes in. I want to bring We've done 30 in. minutes? Yeah, we've gone. It's 826. We started wow. uh exactly 29 minutes and 45 seconds ago. 
I want to bring Nikki back in. Is she there? She's here. I am here. Oh, you got such a sexy voice, Nikki. Is that uh, because Dan Aguirre is a radio guy and you got your own radio voice? No, no, it, it's from it's from smoking for many years. <laughs> but yeah, that's sort of her shtick, man, making dudes come in their pants when she was a stripper. So you know. Oh, so you were a stripper, huh? I didn't know that. So tell us I, about your stripping life. Very cliche. I stripped my way uh, through uh, college for a couple oh, of years. Excellent, excellent. Very cliche. Uh, what, what was the name of the club or clubs? Can you name those? Uh, I yes, I can. Cool names. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, first club I worked out was called Girls, Girls, Girls mm-hmm. from like, the Motley Crue song. Yeah, that's what I was saying, like Motley Crue. Yeah. Okay. Um, second club I worked at, uh, the one I worked at the longest was called Southern Exposure. <laughs> was that a bottomless uh, club? Right. Yes, they're all nude here in West Virginia. Yeah, all of them show the pussy here, which is the way it should be. Yeah, all nude. All nude. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, completely nude. Um, I have also appeared at the uh, Gold Room in Charlotte, North Carolina as a feature. And yes. I was also a feature at Mouse's Ear West in Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow, that is awesome. So when you're the feature act, it's is it similar to like a burlesque show? Maybe some girls come out first, they do their thing, and then you come out and the entire audience, all eyes are fixated on you? Yes, yes. Got to tell you a quick story. I, the, I think it was the second time I went to a strip club. It was the Admiral Theater here in Chicago. And I went all by myself uh, because there was a porn star uh, she was the feature performer. And so I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I didn't know that I had to tip and all that stuff. And so she, the feature performer is doing her routine and uh, people are going up and tipping her. And so I wanted her to come close to me. So I go up and I tip her a dollar and she looked at me like I insulted her mother. And she <laughs> kept she kept on dancing and she kept, and every time she looked my direction, it was like, Give me a fucking dollar. Everybody else is taking me five, tens, twenties. You give me a dollar. So I've uh, I've been a big tipper ever since. So <laughs> yeah, I'm just I guess I was a cheap whore. I'd pick up change. So I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm pretty. I, I want money. So I'm picking up that change. <laughs> I love it. I've never been to a. Uh, I've never been to a club. I've been to a bunch of Vegas clubs and I would throw a dollar on the stage, you know, but never throw any loose change. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you how stupid guys are. Uh, I went to a, I, I've never been a strip club guy. And this has nothing to do with her. I mean, like I said, we already broken up by that time and it's not to repudiate what she did or anything. If anything, she was smart because she's hustling. The guys are so dumb. That's my point. Mm-hmm. But I went... The first strip club I went to was because Miss Nude World was there. And we had seen her on Jenny Jones, and she had been on Stern, you know, on E, because yeah. Stern had to show an E. So right. it's like, oh, man, Miss Nude World is coming to, I was at uh, West Virginia State then. It was in Huntington, where Marshall University is. So anyway, my point is, I went there because it was Miss Nude World, and I was like, her pussy's got to be like gold or some shit to be Miss Nude World. And I'm like 19. I fucking like two dudes or two dudes. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Freudian wow. slip. Wow. Look at that. I fucked two guys. No, I fucked like, fuck like two girls at the time. <laughs> but no, but look what these dudes did, though. Okay. So she goes, so she puts her shit up in the air, like elevates it. I can't do it if I wanted. I don't have the, you know, a flexibility. But she puts her pussy up in the air and she's like, all you guys now, uh, ball up your dollar or your dollars and throw them. And if they stick on my pussy, I'll suck your dick. Guarantee. <laughs> wow. I guarantee that she got like two thousand dollars in two minutes. Wow. wow. These Amazing. guys thought they were gonna make their her dollar, their dollar bill stick on their pussy. I was like, I looked around thinking, we're a bunch of cavemen. We have no idea what yeah. we're doing here. I didn't do it. I didn't throw the dollars. In. Yeah, I would tell dudes like my pussy cured cancer. Like I didn't care. Like, <laughs> Just oh, look into it. It'll cure your cancer. Please just give me money. <laughs> How many lap dances would you say you've done in your career? Oh, my God. A few a, a hundred, thousand? I guess. No, oh, no. A few hundred. I don't know. Like a, 10 a night for about two years. I don't know. Tell them the it, bad story. Yeah, tell me the bad story. Which story? The, 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 the guy that, you know. 
the guy the that guy came that, on himself? No, the guy, when you were doing the lap dance, it was basically trying to assault you. Oh yeah, 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 Ooh. yeah. Uh, there's one story. I, um, I was, uh, and I just become a dancer, and mm-hmm. I was talking to him about this last night. How nerve wracking it is, but I'd mm-hmm. been a dancer for like a matter of a month or two. And I'm dancing on the stage and I'm like bent over and like this cretin like behind me takes like his index and middle finger and like runs it up the back of my pussy and my ass. Oh, wow. So I reared back my foot and my eight inch platform heel met with his nose and it broke his nose and he was bleeding everywhere. And he tried (laughs) to jump over the stage to attack me and the bouncer drug him out. Like, yeah, it was... Yeah, that was crazy. That's probably one of my crazier stories. I would hope so. <laughs> one of my crazier stories. I've got a hundred crazier ones. You got another one? Not the Knoxville one, but the other one. Oh, yeah. And there was another one um, when I was working at, at a bar. And I this was probably like not long before I quit. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like a few months before I'd quit dancing. And I was giving a guy a lap dance. And he actually like I was standing in front of him with my ass facing him. And, like, he tried to, like, grab me and pull me down on his lap. And he's, like, trying to take down, you know, my my underwear, you know, my my thong. And, you know, and I'm, like, you know, yelping. And, like, the girl next to me, like, giving the lap dance, the bouncer didn't even hear it. Like, the girl next to me, and she probably weighs 88 pounds and is, like, oh like five foot one. And she, like, runs over there, and she's, like, slapping this guy, and like, pushing me away and, like, yelling for the bouncer. And, like, he got kicked out. And, like, yeah, there's... There are animals in there. I mean, like I said, for the most part, it was pretty positive. But, you know, it's I, I mean, every dancer's got nightmare stories. I bet. I've always thought it would be really, really cool to do like a dramatic show. It ha- ha- would have to be on the premium channels about the uh, strip club life. You know, the people that work there, the girls, the managers, the security people, the uh, regulars who come in and... Uh, I, I think it would be fascinating. I know HBO has done like some mini documentaries or reality type like shows. Like the Bunny Ranch. Yeah, I exactly. Think, I think I think they had one called G String Divas at one point. Yes, yes. Yeah, but what, yeah. What, what, that wasn't like a fictional story. That wasn't that no, like no, 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 no. Girls. Was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would want to do it fictional because I think there are, I, I've talked to so many strippers over my life and they've told me these stories, you know, about what they're doing to try to make ends meet or, you know, one of them tried to get me to uh, go back to her dominatrix place so she Ooh. can beat the shit out of me. It's just some fascinating stuff. And then I would love to do as a former producer director i'd love to work on a project like that but um, i'll have to leave it up to dan aguirre and some yeah. other young younger guys to produce the show you know the I love thing i never got you know the thing i've never got from uh the, so many men and she can speak to this more than me obviously mm-hmm. but the guys that like want to be humiliated and shit you know like that like uh, lick your fucking like boot or whatever the fuck they do. Like they want you to just walk on them. Like what? or hurt. Uh, I had I had one uh, client uh, who was a regular, and mm-hmm. he came in about once a month, and he wanted me to not take my top off, not take my bottoms off. He just wanted me to burn cigarettes out on his arm and chest. <laughs> he came in. He came in like clockwork once a month, like for he got that about welfare a year. Check. He's going to the strip. Club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't Howard Stern have somebody who wanted the stripper to vomit on him? I'm sure. I don't remember, but yeah. Yeah. Wow, cigarettes on him. So you you know those guys who have fetish like that, fetishes like that, those could be your best customers, right? Because they come in regularly for. They could really- also be killers. <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's another plot element for our show <laughs> yeah. Who's by the way my, be strangled my, exactly by the way robert trader might get strangled he is a green bay packers fan he and i used to do a packers barroom podcast together i haven't seen him in a few years thanks for stopping by robert he writes the first thing i hear from the barroom network when opening and scrolling on facebook is pussy and dick <laughs> Is he saying this positively or negatively? I don't care. Oh, oh happy faces. He's from okay. Green Bay. Of course it's positive. Uh. 
They don't talk about sex up there. <laughs> All right. I think this is a good segue to do our little game show because Tooch is going to be ready in about 30 minutes to come in with his bear state of affairs. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit about these five draft picks that I have. Maybe we'll get through all five, but I at least would like to share one or two, and then we'll uh, see where the discussion goes to. Um, all right, so first, let me play my little video open. Oops. I needed 15 <laughs> pictures to fulfill that the template thing. And you only sent me like 12. And so I put in shots of uh, uh, the Bears logo and uh, a couple of feet together in bed. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> All right. So this is, a, a, do you recall the old newlywed game? Yes. Okay. So this is essentially that. Nikki, I'm going to ask you some questions about Dan, and if Dan gets the same answer, then you're going to win a point. And a uh, at the end of this, if you get enough points, if I if I determine that you entertain our audience well enough, <laughs> you will get a free gift. This is the main All right. Here. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to ask you this first question. It is more often than than not, does Dan wear his socks? When having sex. Yes, he wears his socks a lot. Ooh. Yes. I mean, I admit that. I admit he does. that. I, I mean, it's not, it should seem, I, mean, I don't need to see his feet. Okay, we'll just be honest. I don't need to see his we feet. Should, we, shower together. we shower together. <laughs> see, uh, that's the chat room crowd. They're very happy you got one. But we, we shower together. She's seen my feet. Yeah, but I, I don't like my feet. I get, I get pedicures and shit, and I still don't like them. So. <laughs> You do get pedicures? I do. He I, does. I don't like. I don't like my feet. <laughs> oh, you don't want to see my feet, man. There's, it looks like the surface of the moon. <laughs> it's so dry. You got God. cracks in them. Oh shit. my God. <laughs> my wife is always saying, "Why don't you get a pedicure?" I'll rub my, my my feet up and down her legs. <laughs> oh my God, that's brutal! Ew! It's it really pissed. All right, so you got one correct, one on the board. Let's go to question number two. Who is the oral master in the bedroom? You or Dan? And Dan. Oh, <laughs> look at this! <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't have to think about it. I'm sorry. He is. He is. <laughs> Well, he does indeed say that he is. And look at the tongue that he's got for that job. That is amazing. Jeez, Dan, what do you do with that thing when you're not eating? <laughs> it looks like a steak. <laughs> Gene Simmons, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Cliff wants to know, do you do the alphabet down there? I remember that from was it Kennison? Sam Kennison? Yeah, Sam that? Kennison. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I think I did that probably the first time around with her because I was just figuring out my game and stuff, but now I got my own moves. You know? Oh nice. Well, I uh just want you to know that I do the Chinese alphabet when I'm down there. Okay. <laughs> oh, you want to try that one? Can you, can you try that one? I don't know Mandarin. I don't I can't. know. <laughs> well, well, learn, goddamn it, learn it. <laughs> by the way, at the start of the show, I said that uh, please don't refer to me by my name, Aldo Gandia. In case my wife hears any of this, uh, I want you all to refer to me as uh, Daniel Shortini. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell is the other Dan? I don't know. I guess we're never doing that show again on Monday, so. Yeah, there it is. I'll put it up on the screen so you don't forget. Daniel Shortino. Shortino. <laughs> Can't even pronounce it. <laughs> Alphabet backwards and forwards, says Jay Grizz. He's a man who has uh, performed cunnilingus at least two or three times. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question number three for Nikki. Okay. If you were keeping score, who has orgasmed first the most often i orgasm the most really? by far yes and, and before yes. him by far yes all right and dan said <laughs> dan's tongue has gotten even bigger um 
<laughs> and set Nikki. So you are indeed correct. Wow. Yay. Three correct answers. I think you're going to win that prize. Yay. <laughs> Nick, uh, excuse me, Dan, do you uh, want to comment at all on uh, the orgasms? At Please. The <laughs> no, that's that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so quiet all of a sudden? <laughs> you sound disappointed. Trying. I'm all right. I was like, God, I'm sorry for coming everywhere. God. I don't mean to. I always feel I always feel uncomfortable like if if we tell the truth on this because it what? feels like it's a lie. But I, we were joking like what like two, three weeks ago and you left one you had, had eight eight orgasms in like what four hours? Yes. Yeah, so it was just like, and that was from fucking Once, and once I get going, like, if I hit, like, like that third mark, like, after that, they're super easy. So it's like, yeah, after that, you could, like, look at me, like, like funny and, but, like... But that's I'll the thing, come. though. We, did, we didn't want to say anything like that because it sounds like we're lying, you know, because, like, I'll oh, get the fuck out of here. Eight orgasms. I mean, I get it. It sounds like I'm lying, but... My pussy is magical. What can I say? That is, or maybe amazing. it's my dick has got some magic. No, nah, it's my pussy. So. <laughs> All my pussy. I just want to say, and again, my name is Daniel Shortini. I have worked <laughs> so hard to get that one big O from somebody. <laughs> and it's like, come on, my jaw. Oh, I've been me. there. I've been there too. I've been there too. But <laughs> I've got good chemistry with her, whether that's in an emotional sense or a physical sense. And that, that started immediately on that first date, on that first... Well, that back date. then, I really didn't know what I was doing. Again, she was the second person I'd ever fucked, and I was her third. So it was like... But yeah, it was good then, but I mean, it was just kind of like... try. I mean, we just... We didn't really know what we were doing. We we're just fucking kids fucking, you know? But uh, I know we were fucking like six times a day back then, though, easily. Because I was like, you know, 16, 17, you know, I've got libido like unmatched at that point. Uh, but now, like, you know, it, it feels like it's more of a strategy, you know, like I kind of know what I'm what I'm trying to accomplish or just figure out what she likes and to go with it. But again, it, there was a lot of pressure. You haven't fucked somebody in 25 years. Are you going to be are they going to remember you like, oh, man, he doesn't meet that expectation that I remembered. So there's a lot of pressure. But. Uh, yeah, man, we got through it, and it was still pretty good. And then it's gotten better and better and better the farther we've gotten along. Definitely, definitely. I love it. First time I had sex, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, and I just said, "I'm going to put it in and go as fast as possible." <laughs> <laughs> That's what minutes. I still do. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I stopped, she goes, "I was hoping you were to come about 15 minutes ago." I go, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> Well, at least you didn't come in like 30 seconds. That's usually, you know, yeah. if, you, if you punch a guy's V card, it's usually like, seriously, 30, 30 seconds, 40 if, if he's Superman. Like, and that's yeah. it. So, well, she was magnificent. She used to have, um, uh, what do you call it? Well, she would ejaculate and I'd feel it down my leg. And I'm like, she'd squirt. Oh, yeah. Did okay. I pee on myself? Or is, is she peeing on me? You know, the first time I didn't know what the hell was going on. But uh, yeah, she was a, a like a, a French statue fountain. <laughs> the water coming out all the time. Nice. Yes, nice. indeed. I made, I made her squirt the other night because uh, she kept saying, "No, no, no, it's it's okay. Stop, stop, stop." You know, and I was like, "I don't want to stop." And I don't mean like for me. Not, I'm not doing this in a mean sense, like you know, like a uh, like a sexual assault here. But she was like, "It's just too sensitive." Cause she's come a bunch, but I was like, trust me, I can do it. And, you know, and, and it'll be good. And she goes, okay. Okay. So, uh, normally, you know, my game, my homeostasis is, is the clit area, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I can bring in some thing the the uh, G spot fingers and things like that. But that was like what she had already come a bunch on and was kind of, kind of sore with. So then I just focused on like literally sticking my tongue in the vagina itself. It was kind of fucking her with my tongue. A couple minutes later, Boom. It was like fucking uh, like a sea of cum came out. She squirted everywhere. We had to change the sheets. There was so much fucking girl cum. I couldn't walk for a little while after that. I had to. Ooh, nice. Wow. Now, yeah. You did... Nice. These really are true stories, right? Yeah. I, I swear. Look, look, no, look, I swear I, for real on my mother's grave, who's almost <laughs> been dead four years now. So. Because a, a lot of a lot of people believe that right now Dan is like giving her 10, 20, keep going, tell them how good I am. No, no, no. Just no. kidding. Just kidding. No. 
<laughs> all right let's she's, go she's her own like she's her own person like if it, like, you can ask her anything like we it's not like she and i talked about what we were going to say or something she, we are both just filthy filthy whores that is just what it comes down to yeah. it's, and that's it too filthy you can't get that that's why it's gonna be perfect when we're married because you can only marry another filthy whore like it, it will not work <laughs> you have it. to be a filthy whore and married to another filthy whore there you go there you go. Yeah. I love the I love the, the the chemistry between the two of you. That is, uh, unfortunately, well, thank you. In, yeah. Unfortunately, in my marriage, there's only one filthy whore. <laughs> <laughs> and I wish I, it was I, me. I, <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> I'm going to tell Mrs. Gandia what you said. Oh no! Oh no! Tell I'm, Daniel Shortino said. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you got it wrong. That's what Kenny said. You're right. That's what Kenny said. <laughs> But um, right, question real, real quick, real quick, I was going to say one thing sure. though. Again, she and I had not spoken since mm -hmm. 2005. Yeah, hadn't talked since 2005, and the our first phone call was like I don't know two, three year or two or three hours rather. Mm -hmm. And like as soon as like it said, the chemistry was there immediately. It was still there. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> the chemistry is still there and will forever be there. That's right, I, I think so. Yeah. All right, question four. Okay. Vicky, what do you think Dan would like to do sexually with you that you have not yet done? Hmm. This was a tough one for me. I got to be honest. I'm thinking, um, God, you filthy whore. You've done so much stuff to me. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Um, you know what? Um, he has not blasted me in the ass yet, so I'll say anal. <laughs> oh, okay. Just Let's because it's just something we haven't done yet. Okay. Dan said, I'd like to penetrate her anally. Ah. Supposedly, she's never done anal. No, wow. no, no. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm not, a, I'm not a big, I'm not a big <laughs> anal. I mean, I've, yeah, I've done like 10 women in the ass my whole life. And I have a difficult, I, I feel so stupid. I'm so glad I'm not like into, into guys. Not that there's anything wrong about that, but like, I, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, it's, it's luck. If it gets in, it's luck. If it stays in, I'm like, mm -hmm. is it too fast? Is it too slow? Like, no, nobody can come because I won't stop asking questions. Yeah. I, have no, I have no idea what I'm doing. When it comes to ass sex. So that's why I'm kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing. I feel so like off of my game. I, I'd rather have the pussy, but I guess because she said, and I mean, I, she has no reason to lie. I mean, like I said, we've known her forever. Uh, I think she'd tell me she's never done it before. So probably we'll do it just because like she's never, but it's not, I don't care if we don't. Mm -hmm. It's not my thing. I got to save something for the wedding night. So <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> there you go. <laughs> got to save something for the wedding night. I love the way you think. <laughs> Nikki Stout. All right, question number five. Uh, are you a member, Nikki, of the Mile High, High Club? Uh, that's easy. No, I have never been on a plane before. That is right. And Dan actually gave that away early in the show. Maybe we weren't live then, but uh, you did mention that Nikki had never been on a plane. So that's an easy one. Are you looking forward to becoming a member of the Mile High Club? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, man. I, that's never going to happen with me because... <laughs> I, I had to, one of the trips back from la last bear season, I had to take a leak in one of those airport airplane bathrooms. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I, I almost pissed all over myself. There was no room in that motherfucker. Like, there's not room for me to pull out my dick in there, let alone insert it into a woman. <laughs> so your dick as big as your tongue? <laughs> my dick was, my dick, which is a medium size, it's okay. Well, but, I, I guess I'm just getting fingered on that plane then, but, you know, I'll, I'll take it. I'm just I'll telling you, it. my medium-sized dick membership. was, my medium-sized dick was as big as that fucking bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is true that it's almost impossible to have sex in an in airplane bathroom now. So what you got to do is take like a, you know, a long flight where you're overnight and you sit next to each other and you're in the back and she can blow me all right i got it yeah or she can, <laughs> oh, she, come she, on. can she can mount you there are, you know creative ways of doing that and you could do it quietly are, do, are you a moaner nikki and, and dan are oh, you yeah. both moaners? <laughs> yes 
<laughs> yes, we're both moaners. Yes, I'm not we, a moaner. Yes, you are. We get into it. Shut the fuck up. You know yeah. you do. Shut I would, the fuck up. The thing I worry about for real though, she's so loud. Like it's like crazy. Like I didn't remember being so over the top. That like mm -hmm. if her kid like because again she's got two kids you know if we're gonna get married like those motherfuckers gotta come too you know it's a package deal so they're teenagers by the way so well but still we can't be fucking like that with the kids in the house like, <laughs> that's my mom like screaming like you know make me come fuck me fuck me god damn it you know we can't have them hear that <laughs> what did PJ uh -huh. say. Everybody is uh, leaving because they've ejaculated already, so they need to take showers. <laughs> All right. How Question did you know? I got to keep them hooked in here. Come on. <laughs> Indeed. I think you, you, you've got them all correct. So let's go to question number six out of seven. Uh, if you were still stripping, do you think Dan would be okay if Aldo purchased a lap dance from you? You mean the other Dan, the other Dan. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> if, if the other Dan Who's that? Yeah. Yeah. Who's that asshole? Yeah, it's a, it's a typo there. I'm, I'm, that, fucking, <laughs> that fucking Mexican uh, graphics designer. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Had to teach him English, and now he fucking. Wow. I think he would be okay with it because it would be in a professional setting. I'm just guessing. Did we lose Aldo? Oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, did, you hear, did you hear Nikki's response? No, oh, I missed it totally. Oh, okay. uh, shit. Okay. I said, I, th I, th I think the answer would be yes because it would be in a you know professional setting. Okay. So, uh, and Dan's response is, I'd be okay uh -huh. with that. Uh. But Dan doesn't look real happy about it. He's, not <laughs> <laughs> he's like begrudgingly, I'd be okay with that. God damn, he's leering at me. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I got so excited that I accidentally hit the exit button. I was going to go take a shower, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, by the way, the Mexican joke is because I am part Mexican. I am a Puerto Rican, so I make Mexican jokes. Okay. We've explained that. Uh, last question. If okay. you ask Dan to bring his favorite Bears player into the bedroom for a threesome, would he be okay with that request? Do you think that Dan would be okay with you? Let me just in? say, <laughs> we were on my balcony last night when I was filling these, uh, responding. And yeah. she was like, what are you giggling about? This was the question I giggled about. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just don't think that he wants any dick to make an appearance other than his dick. And so I don't think he wants a co-star. I'm just, I'm just being real here. I, I, don't, I, I think his dick wants to be the star. So I'm, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I could be wrong, but I'm going to say no. All right. Let's see what Dan said. No, I'm <laughs> done with threesome. <laughs> and he's got me with Twiggy Ramirez and Manson. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. All right. There's threesome. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, this picture would be perfect for this graphic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that is our show. But by the way, would you, I mean, if it's Jay Cutler in the bedroom, the three of you, Nikki, Dan and Jay Cutler, you wouldn't say yes? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> now, if you said Justin Fields. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, I don't, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, I, I'm too old for threesomes and shit, man. Like I said, I'll have a hard time being good enough on my own, let alone trying to compete with, with Jay Cutler, you know? <laughs> what was the old Rodney Dangerfield joke? He would say, uh, yeah, I love having threesomes threesomes that way when i fall asleep in the first five minutes the two of them have each other to keep company <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's where i'm at uh all right that was uh pretty outstanding so the gift i forgot to pull the picture of the gift but it you have uh two gifts coming one of them will be a penis pump that way oh. if you desire dan to go a couple more inches <laughs> all he's got to do is <laughs> I think I came in at the wrong work? time. Or <laughs> <laughs> Do those things work? Maybe I should try to try them. Oh 
I don't know. I, if it does work, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> and then the other present uh, is uh, edible panties, uh, Nikki, for you to wear uh, the next time you and I see each other. <laughs> <laughs> what flavor are they? <laughs> You know, cherry all the way. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, Ray says that you would pick uh, Brian Erlacher for that threesome. Jeez, I wouldn't do that. I'm not. I'm not a fan of fifty four. So <laughs> maybe Lance Briggs. <laughs> Lance Briggs, yes. Who? Which G- Bears give player? Give me Tank would... Johnson. <laughs> no, we're going to what about if Aaron Rodgers says, listen, I'll give you each $10,000 if I can have sex with both of you. What would you uh, say to that? How well, much? $10,000 <laughs> each. Hell no, no, no. The only way no. I'm doing anything dirty with Aaron Rodgers is if it somehow means the Bears win the Super Bowl. <laughs> I've made that perfectly clear. If you, guys need, if you guys need me to suck some guy's dick, if the Bears win the Super Bowl, I'll take it for the team. I would like to see that. <laughs> well, I would be willing to suck Aaron Rodgers' dick. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I yeah. even said I would let Virginia McCaskey take a shit on my chest if it meant we really win the Super Bowl. Mio. Hey, Heidi. What's up? <laughs> oh, that is good stuff. All right, uh, I think we're uh, waiting on uh, Mr. Santucci. Uh, Johnny Santucci does his show from uh, his bedroom, and so the little the girls are asleep, right? John yeah, just John. bought a house. When's he moving? He's moving in uh, as soon as you and I travel to Iowa. Help him back up and move in. Oh God! <laughs> uh, there he is. Oh, this is great! Wow, <laughs> let's. I've one got of the best breaking. shows. Hey, Chooch, listen real quick. I got breaking news for you. This, for real, you listening? Mm-hmm. This is sad. Former Chicago Bear wide receiver Chase Claypool is going to the Canadian Football League. Oh, <laughs> nice. If this is a real tweet, it's from X. Actually, my friend Jason, who is Nikki's cousin, who I knew I knew uh, Jason first, he just sent me uh, a screenshot from X. I don't know if it's legit, but uh, he just sent this to me. That is wild. I could see that. I mean, he's uh, he hasn't signed a contract. He became a free agent uh, early March like everybody else and uh, hasn't been able to hook up with the team. I'm sure that calls have been made to the Chicago Bears, to the Miami Dolphins. What's Chase Claypool like? He's a, he's a fucking idiot, as my mom would say. <laughs> Someone will need to do a welfare check on Nomad. <laughs> oh, Nomad's a big Claypool fan? Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, he gave me shit for saying it was the worst trade ever. Well, you know, and and it's proven out to be. You know, you don't give a second round draft pick to a guy who has no interest in hustling, no interest in blocking, no interest in being a team player. That's yep. what Chase Claypool was, and I was very disappointed because when he came out of Notre Dame, I wanted the Bears to draft him, and yep. uh, he had a good rookie season. But outside if of Mike that, Mike Tomlin's getting rid of somebody. They they're not good anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've learned that the hard way. How about it? <laughs> and, and it's probably uh, works in reverse too. So he'll pick up uh, Justin Fields and turn him into a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah. Uh, PJ says uh, when your woman wants to see you suck another man's tool, it's time to run. <laughs> <laughs> Would I'm you agree saying. with that, Nikki? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Hear me out. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> Well, Nikki, I got uh, news for you. Uh, if you want more information on that, uh, I'll, ha- I'll give you Tucci's number because he's got a lot of experience <laughs> in the male pornographic <laughs> business. <laughs> he uh, has directed many scenes, man on man, woman on woman, goat on duck, uh, all sorts of stuff. That's that pretty hot. That. That's pretty hot. Goat on duck. <laughs> Uh, All right, you got a bear state of affairs for us? Ready to roll. Okay, I got to tell you this, Nikki. This, what John Santucci is about to do, the television networks will pay him hundreds of thousands of dollars. (laughs) But here at the barroom, he he just does it for a a shot of bourbon. 
<laughs> That's all he does it for. <laughs> so it's called Bear State of Affairs. He's going to give us an inside look of how his brain works about the Chicago Bears, what he's thinking about that franchise right here and right now. There we go. <laughs> Pussy dicks, ass blasting Dan Shortino. I just, to, I just wanted to fit in with the rest of the show. <laughs> nice job. Very nice. You forgot fingering. <laughs> <laughs> That's later on in the bit. Oh, okay, okay. All right. <laughs> Bears state of affairs. All right. NFL offseason week 11. What's happening, Barflies? Well, we are about three and a half weeks out from the 2024 NFL draft. I got to tell you. The closer we get, the more excited I am to begin the Caleb Williams era. With every day that passes in the world of Chicago Bears, the clear Ryan Poles plan becomes. More on that later. In hindsight, there were quite a few signs from the Chicago Bears indicating that they were preparing for a quarterback change. While the Bears waited until the first weekend after the start of free agency to trade Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers, there was a revealing comment made by Matt Eberflus at the NFL Scouting Combine that should have served as confirmation of the quarterback change. In fact, Ibraflus provided insight on what he as a coach looks for in the quarterback position. Quote, I look at situations, Ibraflus said. I look at the guys that can operate third down, two minute, and the end of game situations. That to me is a separator. Looking back on those comments by Ibraflus, one could say those comments were the closing words on Fields chapter as the starting quarterback of the Bears. While there was no doubt that Fields took a step forward in his development this past season, he still struggled in third downs and fourth quarters. Of his nine interceptions last season, five were on third down plays. In the fourth quarter of games last season, Fields completed only 53.4% of his passes with six interceptions. And Caleb Williams should be an improvement on third downs for Chicago Bears, and here's why. In his two years at USC, not once did Williams throw an interception on either third or fourth down. For a Bears team that will have the expectation of making the playoffs next season, Williams avoiding turnovers on third down will be crucial. Using the same criteria, once again becomes easy to see why the Bears should be sold on Caleb Williams. Talking to ESPN's Jordan Reed, one NFL scout offered high praise of the USC quarterback with less than a month to go before the 2024 NFL draft. Quote, he's special and whoever gets him will have a franchise altering type of talent, said the scout who works for an NFC team. Honestly, if Caleb stays healthy, he should demolish at least two of the Bears' rookie passing stats. Number one, most passing yards, 2,193 by Mitch Trubisky, 2017. And two, most passing touchdowns, 11 by Charlie O'Rourke in 1942. Wow. <laughs> yep, can you believe it? 11 passing touchdowns. That's the team record. Come on. Mm. All right, last week I mentioned Justin Fields' eight NFL records, much to the chagrin of some of the haters in the chat room. Well, those Bears fans are probably better off as Eagles fans. But here's a couple <laughs> NFL records that Williams has a chance to eclipse. In 2011, Cam Newton had arguably the greatest season by a rookie quarterback ever when he became the first rookie quarterback to throw for over 4,000 yards in a season. As well, Newton's 854 passing yards through his first two games were the most by a rookie in NFL history. So when Caleb Williams does get drafted by the Chicago Bears, the expectations will be very high, bordering on impossible. Like I said last week, Williams will be stepping into arguably the best situation that a rookie quarterback has ever stepped into. In hindsight, one could say that C.J. Stroud stepped into a pretty good situation last season when he led the Texans to a playoff victory over the Browns. That will likely increase the expectations for Caleb Williams. Not only that, but Williams has been positioned as the top quarterback in the 2024 class for at least the last year. I got to believe that's uh, encouraging to hear, right? <laughs> <laughs> Being the consensus number one pick for so long has a downside, though, because it inevitably leads to a level of nitpicking that's uncommon for a typical draft prospect. In the case of Williams, the criticism is even extending beyond his skills and focusing on irre irrelevant matters such as what color his cell phone is. Lately, it seems that Williams will have to overcome the Bears organization's reputation as a destination where quarterbacks go to die. I hate that. In fact, it's been baffling to hear NFL pundits express their disappointment that Williams, 
did not pull an Eli Manning or a John Elway and refused to play for the Bears. Oh. Yeah, that's how it's happening over there on X. Oh, yep, I'll never forgive a... Caleb for not doing an Eli or Elway. <laughs> yeah, uh, outside uh, of Washington being his hometown, there is no other reason why Williams should refuse to play for the Bears in favor of the Commanders. There really isn't a greater landing spot for the USC quarterback than the Bears. Williams is not even in the building at House Hall yet, and Poles has already confirmed he will do everything to make sure the quarterback succeeds, even adding Justin Herbert's best friend, Keenan Allen, to the roster this offseason. That already is more than any Bears general manager has been willing to do in the past. Ryan Pace missed on Mitch Trubisky and Justin Fields, and it set the franchise back at least five years. If you miss on a quarterback, you can bet your franchise will be mid for at least the next five seasons. The polls will make sure that Caleb Williams is the right player before he selects him. Regarding the Chicago Bears trademark in the upcoming NFL draft, well, that revolves around the number nine overall pick. The Bears should field a handful of trade offers at number nine because of the needs of the teams beneath them in the draft order. Polls said the strategy for what the Bears do at number nine will depend on several factors. During the final lead-up to the draft, the Bears' scouts and personnel people will split into three teams and debate the merits of drafting a wide receiver, an edge rusher, or an offensive tackle with their second first-round pick. Ryan Poles likes to build through the draft, and with only four picks in the upcoming draft, a trade back once or twice seems incredibly likely. Nope. After all, the Bears' general manager has drafted 21 players in two years. Competition this year should be fierce in training camp, as Paul stated recently, quote, it will be very hard for players to make this team. It hasn't always been easy to see Ryan Poles' plan for the Bears, but here's a little roadmap. Since hired, Poles has gotten rid of every single consultant. He set a standard. Yeah. <laughs> he set a standard. Goodbye, Ernie Acorsi. He said, bye bye. <laughs> he set a standard that everyone in the organization must adhere to. He brought the Bears from zero cap space to the most cap space in the league. He turned a number one pick into two number one picks. His player acquisitions have created a roster designed to make life easier for a rookie quarterback. That should be more than enough to build excitement in a fan base whose team has been trying for years to get the most important position in sports right. And that is Bears State of Affairs. I love it. Boy. That escalated quickly. The kid with the electric oh, arm. That was outstanding, Tooch. You nailed it again. <laughs> 11, or was it 12 touchdowns to Charlie Walker? Come on. We can't beat oh. that. Uh, Dan, I was thinking to myself, what the hell is he going to talk about? There hasn't been much going on other than like Bears Twitter is going fucking crazy. You guys see the, <laughs> the latest controversy? <laughs> What's no. up? Uh, somebody from uh, the Three Kings of the yeah. Midway show called uh, Jeremy Layton. Je Jacob Infante? Yeah, Jacob Infante. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeremy Layton. Uh, Jacob Infante. I, I don't know why, but he called him a fucking faggot i think a fat yeah. faggot oh. I think. Yeah. <laughs> on social media of all <laughs> things and so mr shorty oh. with the ten dollar tip that goes all right. right into the was he here when we had the uh, uh all the no, he, talk? he just arrived uh, uh he missed the whole show don't rewind <laughs> You see that, Nikki? You get a ten dollar tip here $10. at the bar room. Yeah, it's better better than those goddamn coins you were reaching for. I know. <laughs> Not even a second you eat a dollar. Four minutes. Great. <laughs> Put that tenor right in the thong. <laughs> <laughs> you ever have a guy uh, try to do that? Put a, put a, a a dollar bill or whatever uh, in your thong. Uh, no, we had like uh, we wore like garter belts, and they were supposed to put it in there. So. Yeah. Well, I, I, the worst I ever did was with my teeth. I put it in the garter belt, and I thought it was hot. Okay. Shit. Now, if a chick did that, if there was a oh. chick in the club and she like came up to the bar to do that, then yeah, totally. Yeah, then that happened. How many uh, percentage wise in your uh, stripping career? How many? What's the percentage in terms of women lap dances for women and lap dances for men? 
less than one percent women. Very, it, it's a, it's a unicorn. It, it's rare. I mean, maybe one or two a year, maybe. That's awful. Yeah. If you would have said ninety nine percent, I would have become a stripper. I'll tell you that. <laughs> hey, but don't feel too poorly for her. She's eating her share of pussy here. Let's be honest. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Um, you want to share a story with us about uh, Cunnilingus? She will. She's a whore. Oh my gosh! Oh my. You love it. I you do. love it. I do. I do. You love it. <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> Any Cunnilingus stories you want to share? Um, jeez, I don't well, know. I, I, as long as they don't involve my wife, I, I'm all ears. <laughs> oh shit! Well, now I got to think. Hold on. <laughs> I got to think of somebody else. Yeah, put me on the spot. <laughs> no, I think probably, probably the hottest time ever. Um, I got I, like I got hit on like by um, another dancer. Uh, it was like end of the night, and like we were two of the last dancers out, and like I, I was getting dressed, and she was on the other end getting dressed, and like we knew each other, you know, in passing and stuff. I never really spoke to her. Uh, her name was Kashmir. And uh, she was, and she was from Thailand. Nice. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful girl. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I'm getting ready. She or was she a lady boy? Mm. No, I checked. There was there was no dick. I checked. Trust me, there was no dick. <laughs> Trust me. No, she she cornered me and like like put me against the lockers like 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 a like a disney channel villain like put me against the lockers and like yeah like and then from there then yeah it, it went down right there in the, a different disney channel yeah in the dressing room it went down right there Very Who went nice. down? both of us okay. <laughs> like the titanic <laughs> like, that is nice and so she was thai and she, did she have dark eyes light eyes oh yeah she had the dark eyes you know the deep set and the long dark hair i mean she was gorgeous did um uh, who came first dan <laughs> or the thai girl or you <laughs> uh me i was nowhere around <laughs> me i told you it <laughs> Dan's never got a lap dance from you under professional. No, no, no. Nope. Wow. Are you? Nope. What about what about at home? No, fuck. I'm too old now. Ain't no way. I'm breaking <laughs> hip or something. <laughs> well, what, will you dance for him? What no, dance? No, I told you, I'll break a hip or something. No way. No, like like a strip, like a strip tease, right? Play like a strip tease. Old, I can do yeah. a strip tease. I could probably. I could still do that. I can still yeah. do that. Do you have a gotta get the you gotta get the shoes again though. I gotta get the shoes. Uh, okay. I don't really want the strip tease. I mean, I just, she just takes the fucking draw off. You know what? He kind of <laughs> does. Like, I will match my underwear and try to look all sexy. He's like, "What are you doing with that shit on? Take that shit off!" Like, he just he doesn't <laughs> even care. He doesn't even care. Foster just revealed that the last time he went to a local uh, strip club here in uh, the area is uh, Heavenly Bodies. He got his last <laughs> DUI, so he's had more than one, <laughs> plus six more tickets. And it, what the fuck happened at Heavenly Bodies to you, Foster? We Holy need to keep shit. a better eye on Foster. <laughs> wow. no shit. I think I saw this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Heavenly Bodies is the place to, to come. So if you come into town, Nikki will take you over to Heavenly Bodies. Mm -hmm. so you can have a good time. All so, right. All right. Elk Grove Village over there. Yeah. Elk Grove Village. Indeed. Um, Dan, you no, no, uh, Aldo, can you, they, can they show their vagina in Illinois? No. At Aww. least not, not in that club. I, and in the city of Chicago, I don't know what the latest uh, I think some clubs were allowed to, and some weren't. I, but I, I don't know. I haven't been to strip. What if we go time. to like Indiana or something? Is it better over there? Yeah, you know, I think those those places probably are better. In Wisconsin too. If Robert Trader is still in the chat room, to tell us what the scene it is. I, but I've heard that the best strip clubs are in Atlanta and in Toronto. You ever hear mm -hmm. that, Nikki? Yeah, I've actually heard that Canadian strip clubs. Um... And then the girls make like super, super mad money, especially in Alaska. Like I heard mm -hmm. like chicks that work in the Alaskan clubs, like become millionaires or something. Damn, Sarah mm -hmm. Palin. <laughs> well, yeah. and, and Vegas is, is a popular place for dancers because when I've been in town for uh, for conventions and stuff like that, 
you know, the strippers would tell me, yeah, I'm from Florida. I came in because I knew this big convention was going to be here. Or I'm from Seattle. Or I'm from Canada and stuff. I mean, they would fly in from everywhere. You would go to the strip clubs if you got there early. You know, they were like, hundred girls for every one guy, you know, <laughs> one guy sitting there by himself and there's a hundred girls trying to get him into the VIP room. But, uh, you, you, so you've clearly, you've never gone to Vegas because you've never been on a plane, huh? Nope. Would you like never to? Never been to Vegas. Tooch is offering. Would you like Dan to? Dan, ever been to Vegas? <laughs> I, I have no interest in Vegas. Uh, I <laughs> Really? I like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, the movie, but I have no interest in going <laughs> there Vegas myself. Vegas is a good time, <laughs> Oh, it is. I, I'm not a gambler, man. I, I, I don't want to do that. There's other stuff, too, though. Yeah. Like, you could go see. Do you like Penn and Teller? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> Fuck no. Do you like any of the old comedians? Because they, they all perform there now. Such as? Oh, let me think. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> um, I, saw, I saw George Carlin there, but now he's dead. Okay, I he's, love George Carlin. But yeah. Yeah. I saw. Um, well, you're not seeing him there now, so no, you know, you're not. <laughs> move on. <laughs> you're not. But you can always go to the uh, Thunder Down Under. That's the male strip club. Then. Oh God. <laughs> oh, okay. I want to know more about this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my uh, my wife went, and she told me the, the you know the guys there had like 16 inch cocks, and they're just waving them in front of everybody's face. I, like, <laughs> one of the things I asked uh, Nikki about, I was like, "Did anyone ever? You remember? Did you you remember Bachelor Party? Tom Hanks? Sure. Yes, good. Movie. I was like, "Did anyone ever do like the hot dog, the dick in the bun, hot dog bun thing to her?" <laughs> she said, "No." I was no. hoping the answer was yes. No, no. <laughs> Nick the Dick, I think no. was his name. <laughs> I love it. Oh God. Uh, Tooch, uh, again, your state of the affairs was great. Anything you it's want hard to add to, come up to what with you those said? Every week, you know. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I, I don't know what the hell, before the show, when I was working on this game show stuff, I was thinking to myself, is he going to do a state of affairs? What the hell is he here to talk about? You know? Time time to launch the Caleb Williams era. Yeah, that, that's true. And, you know, I, I came up with this stupid idea of introducing to our followers five potential players in the draft that I think could surprise Bears fans because they might be targets of the Chicago Bears. And oh, yeah. so I'm going to go through these five pretty quickly, and then we'll uh, turn mm -hmm. to other subjects. But in the first round, I, I, there's a line, uh, left tackle named Joe Alt, who everybody says, oh, the Bears need to get this guy. I think not. As much as I love Notre Dame, and I think Alt is going to be an excellent player in the NFL, there's a guy named Troy Fontenot who is, was the left tackle for Michael Penix down at Washington. This guy is the best fit for the Bears' offensive line problems available in this draft. And the reason why is because he's so versatile. He's played left tackle his entire college career, played a little bit at right guard, but from all reports is this guy can be will probably be a left guard, if not the left tackle. He could also play the right guard at the right tackle. And even at the, one of the college all-star games, they had him, they took a look at him as a center. So his versatility is exactly what the Bears need. They need somebody who can step in for Nate Davis or, or step in for Tevin Jenkins, or step in for Braxton Jones. And this first season of his career, he would benefit from not playing every down, and he could, uh, in one year's time, be the starting left tackle if things don't work out for Braxton, or, or the starting right guard, or whatever position. Uh, you know, Tucho, I was actually going to send you this list to see, because I know you love scouting players. Uh, so if you have anything to add on Troy Fontenot, let me know. But what I have seen and heard and read about him is that he's a perfect fit for the Bears scheme. He rated highly as a pass blocking and, and, and picking up blitzes, and he sustains blocks because uh, Michael Penix over at Washington State had the, the most, uh, the highest ball in the air completions. In other words, the ball was up in the air for three seconds. And so you got to hold your blocks. And he was the left tackle protect, protecting Penix. Yeah, I like um, it. He's got. They need someone yeah, versatile. They need somebody versatile. Yeah, and the other thing in. that fans will love about this guy is he is even meaner 
than uh, Jenkins. He, this guy's got a mean streak. He takes. Well, let me blocks. play devil's advocate, Aldo. Please do. The, ver please do. the versatility, the versatility uh, argument makes me nervous because the Bears, uh, for years, seemingly when they start yeah. moving the linemen around, whether it's Whitehair or Kyle Long, it just stunts their growth at seemingly every position. Like, I want them to draft a kid for left tackle or whatever position and just let him grow there and put him there and stop fucking around and quit moving him into other positions, you know? The Bears do I, that and just ruin their draft picks. I agree. I'm not a big fan of moving players around, but I think uh, what I'm trying to say is that in this guy's rookie year, you can move him around. And so if if we find out that Braxton Jones, we've overhyped him, we've overrated him, and he's really not going to be our left tackle, then 2025, Troy moves in then, or in the middle of the season or whenever we've had enough of Braxton Jones, we move him at left tackle and he's the guy there. Or if – the same thing with Tevin Jenkins. If he gets injured and Braxton Jones is playing well at the left tackle and Jenkins gets injured, put Fontenot in there. And when Jenkins comes back, he either moves over to right guard or he doesn't play at all because those injuries are, are a concern. So, you know, I understand your point of view correctly. Yeah, but the I, versatility is scary, too, is all I'm saying. But I, everything I, you're I, saying, you're saying, it like, the, the dude, the can pass block, I'm interested. Mm -hmm. oh yeah, we're gosh. talking you're talking you're talking to me you're gonna say we're gonna draft that guy number nine i'm in i'm in so uh, uh and a lot of people do we have on the old line last year it's way too many everybody in the line got injured uh except darno Wright. i want to say i don't think yep. he got injured he it played was... hurt though he played hurt a few times he he did indeed. He did indeed. So that was one of the players I, I thought could be a surprise pick by Ryan Pose. Now, the next player that I got is a safety. And the reason I think this could be a surprise is because everybody thinks that we signed this guy, uh, Bayard, and they're, they're thinking it's a two-year contract. He'll be around. I don't think we should count on any player when you sign him that's 30 years old, that he can play longer 100%. into his career. That's a risky proposition. So yeah. I think that the Bears with the 75th pick should be targeting a safety, a good one, if he's there. Now, the thing with yeah. this guy, Cole Bishop, is that I've seen him rated as the number one safety and then also the number 10. So scouts are a little divided on him. But from what I've seen of this guy, he, he can play every safety position, the sole safety up top. He can play three safety uh, positions. Yeah. He can move up and, and guard tight ends at the slot position. This guy is uh, is is a stud. Reminds me of Doug Plank with his hits. He's not going to do an Eddie Jackson and play Ole with missed tackles. Cole Bishop is a stud safety, and if we – if he's available at 75, yeah, don't be, be surprised. Yeah. It's like a Harrison surprised. Smith of the Vikings. Yes. Yes. That's a great comp. A great comp. I, I really like Cole Bishop, a, a great player. So the next player I got is, again, people think that because we've got three running backs with the guy that we just signed uh, from the Eagles and uh, Khalil uh, Herbert. I was going to say. Khalil Herbert, I was going to say Mac, uh, and last year's number five draft pick, Rashawn Johnson. Everybody thinks, oh, we're not going to touch a running back. But oh, the new to. kickoff rule almost demands that you pick up a guy like this guy. Oh, I love him. Isaac Garendo, yeah. this guy is big, strong, and fast. He will play all, of, all four units of the special teams. Yep. He's going to be an immediate starter on kickoff returns. He had he was the fastest guy, at forty yard dash at the combine up from the running back position, yeah. and I love having a game breaking, explosive play running back on the roster. He's outstanding at picking up blitzes and pass blocking, and he when you throw him a screen yep. pass, Good all receiver. of a sudden, yes, from three yards to thirty yards, he'll take those screen passes. Isaac Garendo is a guy that a lot of people are saying should be available in round four. If he is, Bears have to think about drafting this guy. Garendo. You need some I Hispanic guys on the team, too. <laughs> All right. And then uh, I got two more. Real quickly, Cornelius Johnson, a yeah. wide receiver. I'm yep. afraid that we're going to miss out on the absolute top wide receivers in this draft. We all know who they are at this point. Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, uh, 
Malik Roma Neighbors. Dunze and Malik Neighbors. Yes. Those are the three. The Bears would be lucky to get any one of those three. It would be fantastic. But because I think they might go either pass rusher or offensive line, they're not going to get those wide receivers. And so it's going to be a while before they turn their attention to the wide receiver position, potentially. A lot depends on if they make trades and so forth. But if Cornelius Johnson is there in day three, you pick him. Why? Because he's a great run blocker, and this Bears team is going to run the ball a lot. Again, he's a four-unit special teamer. He played at Michigan, so he played in a pro system. He played for Jim Harbaugh, and you know if you play for Jim Harbaugh, you got to be a good blocker if you're a wide receiver. He had the highest rating for contested catches by pro football uh, focus. He's like 6'3". Uh, he runs a 4'4", four, 5'5", four, so he's fast, he's tall, he's lanky. And they say that when he blocks, he's got a little bit of an edge. He likes to push the guy. He likes to, you know, yap a little bit. And I know I know Dan Aguirre is going to caution me on that, but I like players like that. Got a little yeah. bit of an attitude. He's you know? big, too. He's like 6'3", 210, 220. Exactly. And he yeah. runs a 4'4". Four, four. And, wow, he would be great. The graves, so, let's, we don't have to say equanimous anymore. <laughs> don't, don't even start with that. <laughs> All right, and the last guy I got is a, a tight end. Again, you know, I brought this up to Greg Gabriel. He goes, I'm not going to pick a uh, tight end in the draft. And I, I'm like, with this new rule with the kickoffs, I can see some teams carrying four or five tight ends on the opening oh, yeah. day roster. I really, really can. Especially they only have if the, two plus one guy on the uh, reserve futures list. Exactly. So especially if he's a good blocker like this guy, also out of Michigan, mm -hmm. A.J. Barner, excellent run blocker. Uh, he His first three years in, in college, he wasn't that great of a pass blocker, but last year he had an excellent year. He's got the size, the height, the weight, the arm length to be a good blocker at the tight end position. He's also a big target i think he's like six four six no he's i think he's taller than that but he's a big yeah, he's target like six, pass five. six five and again he played at that pro scheme at michigan and he's another competitive tough guy he will push you around and so forth so those are my five guys troy fontenot cole bishop isaac garendo cornelius johnson aj varner if any one of these guys is chosen by the chicago bears you better believe i'm going to be on here bragging about my <laughs> tiny accomplishment <laughs> so what do you think dan aguire any thoughts on my guys um i definitely like the offensive line and, and mm -hmm. i can see safety but mm -hmm. like I, I know you were talking about the wide receivers probably one of the fourth was it the fourth win, win, winner or lower picks we only uh, have five picks we only uh, have, have one nine seventy five, one twenty two. Right. Yeah. Okay. I gotta believe. I gotta believe that they can trade that nine and go down two or three or four spots and still pick up Troy Fontenot. I've seen him mid first round. I've seen him as the the highest I've seen him is twelfth picked on uh, on mock drafts. But uh, so he I'm might still the, be there. I'm of the mindset that uh, we want to win now. So. Mm -hmm. I know that they don't have a lot of picks this in this particular draft, but right. I say whether it's an offensive lineman or the edge rusher or the mm -hmm. the three tech, whatever, somebody that's going to start week one at the nine, take the take the fucking pick, take the pick. Don't worry about trading. Get us another starter. Obviously, you have to take the quarterback number one with uh, Fields in Pittsburgh. Now you have to draft Williams. So I, I would be fine if they just utilized the two draft picks that they have there at one and nine myself. Hey, Tooch, I've been saying this too. You know, I really would love to come out of this draft with two blue chippers. You know, Caleb is at least, at the very least, he's regarded as a blue chip player. Uh, the number nine pick should be somebody like one of those three receivers or Dallas Turner, who I think yep. is the best pass rushing defensive end, or Alt or Fontenot, who I think are blue chip players, potentially blue chip players. Um, would you be willing to sacrifice coming out of this draft with two blue chip players and instead adding three more draft picks um, because you're trading the number nine and you're moving down in the first round and maybe picking up a second and maybe picking up another pick in the seventh round or something? Would you be in favor of that or would you rather see a couple of blue chip players picked up? I probably would go blue chip, but we all know Ryan Poles is a guy that loves trading back. You know? Yes, he does. Before he's right now, he's like thinking, "How can I trade four picks into eight? 
Uh, see, but I think that this is the year you don't do that. This is a year where there was a lot of college players who went back to play college football. The, day three is doesn't have the amount of talent of, of other day threes in, the, in this draft. So I think that polls might agree with that and say, you know what, I'm happy with the four picks. I'm going to get four really good players and then uh, start looking at free agency because there's another round of free agency see- after the draft. I could see him stand put at one nine and seventy five, and then turn in one twenty two into three picks. That's what he did uh, his first year. He got three seventh round uh, picks, indeed. Yeah. So pretty cool. Uh, all right, guys, it is nine thirty. Um, Nikki, what do you think about a, that? A I was going to ask Nikki what she thinks about the NFL draft. <laughs> sure, she loves it. No comment. No comment. <laughs> The, are you the, t- are you tired of Dan's uh, incessant talking about the Bears? Oh no, never, never. I have always completely supported the Bears for Dan. Always. Wow, man, you really yeah. ha- have outkicked your coverage as yep. uh, Cliff yep. Thorne said. <laughs> well, I didn't want her to leave last time. That was up. That was her. So. <laughs> but can I tell you one football thing that's important before we get back to the the fun stuff? Sure. Uh, this is to anybody in the chat room that is not in Illinois. And that has to pay for the bear game, such as myself. Uh, for NFL Sunday ticket this year, if you subscribe to YouTube TV, they give you the chance to get installments, which they did not last year. Because remember, last year was the first year of Sunday ticket on YouTube TV. You had to pay one lump sum of three forty nine or four forty nine, whatever. But this year, if you subscribe to YouTube TV, you can get four installments of eighty seven twenty five. For the Sunday nice. ticket. So again, if you if you're the other Dan and you're in Florida or Georgia and you have to get the ticket, there you go. Four payments of eighty seven twenty five. I've already made my first payment. Love it. Because I canceled Direct TV. I had it since Clinton was president, but I canceled. <laughs> I hope uh, YouTube is listening and they will uh, become a sponsor. Yeah, that'd be great. Yep. Jay, Jay Grizz wants to know if Nikki yells "fuck Green Bay" during sex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saving it for the wedding night. I'm saving it for the wedding night. Nice. It works for me. If you if you're tired of all the sex that night, then just start talking about Aaron Rodgers. That'll give him a soft on real real I, easy. <laughs> I will say one thing on behalf of Nikki here, and not being a dick because I know nobody knows her here. This is her first time on, but her name is N I C K Y, N I C K Y. It's her name's been misspelled her whole life. So I mean, uh, if someone I could, did it. I think I did it on the uh, on the uh, cover you, you did, you did. It's, it's okay. fine. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. I'm pissed off now. Now if she's <laughs> Nikki Aguirre, both of them are going to be fucked up for. <laughs> yeah, right. Two G's in Aguirre, or two R's, or three R's. Yeah, or God. <laughs> there used to be a pitcher with the Chicago Cubs named Hank Aguirre, left-handed. But I think he spelled it differently than you. I think he was Cuban. Well, don't forget Mark Aguirre from DePaul and yes. the Detroit Pistons and the Mavericks. He had the two R's, though. Yes, yes. I was wondering uh, about that because back then I was a kid. I was saying, man, is Mark Aguirre of DePaul, is, is he Hispanic? But he wasn't. All right, the fun stuff. Uh, let's talk now about Johnny Santucci's uh, board career. <laughs> you, you did some stripping too, right, John? You know, uh, I attended some bars and then uh, uh, had to do some stripping uh, as part of the side, you know, gig there. That's how it all starts. That's how it all starts. <laughs> uh, I, you know, uh, John was a very good looking man back in his well, 20s. I, I, yeah. bet you, I bet you he got a lot of tips. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, don't do this what, again. <laughs> what, once you get uh, into your 50s, those looks start, you know, where did they go? <laughs> yeah, your eyesight yeah. and your <laughs> right, right. and your good looks. Yep. <laughs> oh gosh, I wanted to ask Nikki what were some of her favorite songs when she was stripping. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. Oh, let me let me ask her. I asked you this last night. Okay. So that'll be it'll go to Aldo. I asked her, Aldo, what was the first song you ever danced to? Like your very oh. first song, and she remembered it. Uh, it was oh. "Young Lust" by Pink Floyd. Oh. Oh, nice. wow. Can you sing song. a little bit for me? I, I don't remember that song. Uh, it was you know, off the wall. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, what about you, Tutro's first? <laughs> <laughs> the final countdown. 
<laughs> Europe, yes. <laughs> Dan, you're not well, much of a dancer. Everybody right? left after that. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> Dan, you're not much of a dancer, so you two probably won't go out dancing much. Right? Oh man, that's the thing, man. I, I, you know, I was married once before, and and she chose a Jason Mraz song. We and it was like seven minutes, and like I made a couple of jokes. I had everybody laughing. Either they were laughing with me or at me. That's debatable. But I was making, I was like, come on, I'm Caucasian. I can't, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You know, like everyone turn around and not watch, whatever. And everybody's laughing and she's telling me like, you're humiliating me. And it's just like, <laughs> it's just the microcosm of my marriage. But the point is, I thought, okay, if I'm getting married again, I'm going to take a class or some shit and learn. But she's like, fuck it, we'll elope. So there's no dancing. I don't have to learn. So no, I don't know. I, I can't dance. Oh, so uh, you're you're actually thinking about eloping, huh? Yeah, she doesn't want a, a, a big wedding. She's like, we can take the. I mean, she I can speak. She can speak for herself. But she was saying that uh, you know why get a huge engagement ring and a big wedding when all that shit can be used for the house or something, you know? Right, I agree. Yeah. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. My, uh, I mean, my well, wedding was twenty five thousand dollars the yeah. first time. That's disgusting. Yeah, we were on the <laughs> beach in Virginia yeah. Beach. It's twenty five grand. Imagine if we could had that had that shit for anything else. No shit, man. Imagine all the strippers we could get. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> two cha. <laughs> what the? When was the last? What was the first song you ever danced to? Oh, I don't remember. We used to do we used to do square dancing in junior high. Yeah, Seriously, some, some kind of country square dancing so tune could, could have been a Merle Haggard song. Yeah, that was the first <laughs> song you danced to. <laughs> Alaman left, <laughs> Alaman right. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> Dan. So when you were in high school dating Nikki, you guys didn't go to the sock hop or anything like that. Sock hop? What are we talking? Yeah, happy days? A, hell, it's I all day. I went. I hung out with Arthur Fonzarelli there. <laughs> Where the fuck I'm was sorry. Patsy at? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply. God that damn, you are... I don't even think I am. <laughs> I Ralph to Mouth was in that motherfucker. Sock <laughs> ups are still popular today. Yeah, they? yeah. Chachi's there. He's, he's still a douchebag. God damn. <laughs> I want to fuck Joni though, but she died. Aaron Moran, she became a junkie. But I thought yeah, she was kind of hot, yeah. Joni. Yeah, shortcake. That's what Fonzie calls shortcake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one in that crowd of happy days do you think would have grown up to be a molester or or a crack whore? Ooh, well, <laughs> we, Aaron, Aaron Moran was on drugs badly, allegedly. So I'm going to say her on the ladder, unfortunately. But yeah. the pervert, I'm going to say Ron Ralph, Howard. Ralph I'm going to say Ron Howard. He's like going bald. He's a redhead guy. No, he, no, 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 no. No, I say it's the non-Asian Arnold. I think that, I think, I think <laughs> he'd be the pedophile. The non-Asian Arnold. Are you Arnold. talking about uh, the guy that was always like, yeah. Big, big yeah. L. That's his name, That's Al. It. Yes. L? Yeah. I'm going with Richie, yep. or, or Richie's brother that was only in the first two seasons. What was his name? Chuck? Yeah, real tall guy. Yeah, and yeah. then like they wrote him out of the script. Chuck was a pedophile. They wrote him out. <laughs> he and Alan Williams were released early. <laughs> I always thought that Potsy could be the guy, you know, because he yeah. seemed like the, the straight lace guy who probably works in an insurance firm, but, you know, uh, after hours he was, <laughs> you know, raping. What Mark do you think all this? One hour this photo show? booth. Yeah. Exactly. What do you all think about this stuff with Puff Daddy? Yeah. yeah, what exactly is going on? going on? Sex trafficking charges? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I, I have a meme that says Puff Day waving saying, see you later, alligator. And then there's an alligator that says, at your trial, pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's uh, uh, allegations. Nothing's been proven. Those yet. are he, allegations, but it's He hasn't shocking. even been arrested yet, right? They've raided his properties, though. I right. mean, it's, I saw that on the news. Yeah, right? it's crazy, man. I, I, man, like, I, you know, if you said Puffy uh, exploited Biggie's death, I'm like, yeah, no one's been exploited ever as much as Biggie by Puff Daddy to come to fame and stuff. But I mean, was he a child molester? I'd be like, no. 
Yeah, hopefully it's not true. But apparently they arrested one of his assistants uh, at Miami Airport with a bunch of drugs and their 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 allegations that he may be Puffy's drug mule. And a bunch, really bunch of guns too, right? Yeah, I haven't been following it that closely. I, I figure if they make an arrest, then I'll dig into it to get all the details. It'll be right up there with Bill Cosby of like, oh, the people that disappoint you on these allegations, you know? Oh my gosh, tell me about it. There's was, the eight year old in me still upset over the Cosby show thing, you know, like not Bill Cosby. <laughs> not Bill Cosby. I Shit, love the I'm, Cosby show. I'm still upset about that one Chicago Bears uh, wide receiver who got busted with a bunch of Sam Hurd? Uh, Sam Hurd acquired He's the out Dallas now. Cowboys. He did, he did ten years, I think, of hard time. He's out though. I wonder how many wow. times he was sodomized in the, the joint there. <laughs> Ten years worth. God. <laughs> uh, what about uh, Rasheed Rice of the Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah. Oh, he's in trouble too. Yeah, he crashes his Lamborghini. and uh, Sounds like Lance Briggs. <laughs> yes, exactly. Except there was video of him allegedly walking away from the cars. <laughs> so that, he's got a Super Bowl bad. ring. He doesn't care. Yeah, you, sh you should start carrying it because football doesn't last that long. Uh, all right, uh, guys, why don't we talk a little bit about movies and stuff? I, I got to share a movie with you, but one, uh, Tooch, why don't you go first? Well, I was watching what you were watching last night. That was the Iowa women's game. Mm -hmm. The whole family, you know, watching uh, Caitlin Clark. Uh, my girls got a kick out. I was, like, showing them how to, you know, shoot the basketball. Mm -hmm. You nice. know, they were getting a kick out of watching her play, and my wife really got into it too. But uh, what a great Jared game. Jared Fogle. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Jared Fogle. You're talking about the worst. The subway guy. You're right, man. Damn. Yeah. yeah. I've never, been watching I, a lot of basketball, although it's it's uh, tournament time. And have you? Are you making money over at the oh, yeah. uh, North oh, Carolina I State? I love the fat kid on North Carolina yeah, State. Yeah, that dude's like 350 yeah. and just balling. He's awesome, uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> His footwork is immaculate. Just yes, left, really. Right hand, boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what about you guys, Dan and Nikki? You seen any good movies? I know you guys go have gone to the theater recently. Yeah, we watched the Sydney Sweeney uh, yeah. film Immaculate. What, was there boobs? No, no. it was so uh, disappointing. There was you no saw tits. A lot of nipple though through okay. a shirt. Through a shirt. Yep. Yep. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the right. same. It wasn't bad though, and the fact we're watching on Easter made it seem so sacrilegious. I mean, it. <laughs> it there's so some some kind of irony when uh, the church is forcing some kind of immaculate birth for their savior, and then you smash it with a brick on Easter. Ooh, what, uh, I don't know. What was the movie about? <laughs> Happy Easter, kids. <laughs> I don't even know what it's about. Is a, yeah, uh, what is it about? Is the church. Comedy? The church is. The church is looking, it's very sort of anti-religion. It's like the church is looking to exploit women that had tragedy when they were younger. So they make, they feel that they're more vulnerable and they make them come to Italy or what have you and join, a, uh, make them nuns. And then they, it's like a Rosemary's baby thing. They impregnate them okay, and make, and make them believe that they're Mary, that they're like a virgin, Ooh. you know? Wow. And, but the, the guy's a scientist and he's like, took the DNA from like the nails are supposed to be one of the nails of the crucifixion. And it's trying to use Jesus's DNA wow. to impregnate uh, a girl. And then to protect all this, the church is willing to kill and murder and stuff. So again, if you're cool. a religious person, you could easily be appalled by this, especially on Easter, <laughs> but uh, being, uh, you know, the person that's kind of like on the fence and all this, it didn't offend me. It wasn't a great movie, but it was okay. I mean, I was entertained. Yeah. And park? sadly, the the uh, the girl born in like 2008 hated me. So beyond that, the girl <laughs> sitting beside me because we're <laughs> assholes. It's because we're assholes. That's why <laughs> I said that to you. Right? Um, was the theater full? No, they, that's what I, Nikki and I talked about. We went to Red Robin later. You know, you go and you mm. talk about with your movie and stuff. And we were like, damn, there's like eight people in the theater or whatever. Like, don't sit beside us. We were here first. If you have a problem with us talking, which we were whispering anyway, to be honest. But mm -hmm. if you have a problem with this, it's the, the fucking theater's empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gone to see another film. So, like, just yeah. move over. Go somewhere else. Fuck off. That's what I should have <laughs> told her, but I just said, oh, I'm sorry. Jesus. Whatever. Well, no pun intended. What was Dan's choice at Red Robin? 
Oh, this mushroom burger, man. Those yeah. gourmet burgers are fucking great. Yep. Man. I love them. And yep. what'd you get? Some kind of yeah, it had like the barbecue sauce on it, like like caramelized onions. It was really good. Yeah, that's that's Ooh. a good that's a great restaurant. Good I burgers, yep. Hell yeah. Love it. I saw a movie called Anatomy of a Fall. Have you guys heard of it? It was nominated for Best Adapt- Adapted uh, Screenplay. I haven't no, seen not it. A, not mm. an original screenplay. And then uh, the actress was nominated for Best Act for Best Actor, Best Female Actor. The plot line is pretty simple, but, it, it, but the story is really layered. Um, a woman is being interviewed a woman who is an author is being interviewed by a young student for, for a magazine article. And during the interview, the author's husband is playing the music like really loud to the point where they say, well, let's cancel the you know interview. We'll do it another day and so forth. And they have a child who is, who is uh, sight impaired. He goes to take the dog out for a walk. And when he comes back, his father is laying on the snow he has fallen off or been pushed off. Uh, his oh. head's cracked open. There's blood and so forth. And so what ensues is a trial to see if it was the wife who pushed him out or whether he uh, got uh, dizzy and, and fell out or whatever it is. And so the film, uh, they, they live in the French Alps and pro- probably about 40% of the dialogue is French and 60% is English because the actress uh, was a non-French girl that got married to this French guy. And so what is fas- fascinating about the movie is that as the story goes on, you learn, the trial goes on, you learn more and more about the relationship between the husband and the wife and, and the kid. And uh, it becomes so fascinating. It keeps you guessing. Well, maybe this person did it or maybe that person or maybe she did it because of this or maybe whatever. And there is one scene in there. If, if uh, I won't give it away, but if you're a dog lover, watch out. My wife was like, turn this shit off. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like 15 minutes left in the movie. <laughs> we, I, I, and so, but it was, it was really a tough scene for anybody who loves uh, pets. This pets is the one stuff. you texted me and said was on Hulu, right? Yes, it's on Hulu oh, okay. right now. Yes. Uh, oh, like so it's tip. called Anatomy who, of a Who are fall. the actors? The actors are all European actors. Uh, I, I can't remember any of their names. There's nobody that you will. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah. And, and then, you know, the director did such a fine job. It's a French woman. And so I uh, Googled what other movies she did. And I saw another movie of hers that she directed. I saw it immediately afterwards. I don't remember it as well because I was passing out a little bit. But I, I watched it all because there was so incredible incredible sex scenes i mean i don't know what's the name of that movie (laughs) (laughs) i'll get you the title (laughs) i forgot the title um damn yeah but i'm telling you the sex scenes were like wow and all of the women in the movie were so fucking beautiful and i i was like totally you know just falling asleep out Keep, keep popping my penis. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Dan so, Spartino's dick? Yeah, Dan Spartino. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they don't call him Shorty for nothing. <laughs> Stop fucking this up. <laughs> so I'll, I'll find that yeah. title. I, I saw a movie I never saw before, and I can't believe I hadn't seen it before. But I think it's called The Yards with Mark Wahlberg and Joaquin Phoenix. I've heard of it. James Kahn. I was like, pretty good. I never, I never. I was like, how did I miss this? But I do have a, a story for uh, Easter Sunday. It was like my wife was obsessed with taking the girls to an Easter egg hunt because I think my seven-year-old was like, can we go to an Easter egg hunt? So we find one. It was at this winery in Indianola, Iowa. And uh, I drive out there, you know, and of course, I'm like, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try some of the wines, you know, while I'm here before the – there was a there was a kid's, you know, two, actually there were two kids' egg hunts and an adult egg hunt too. So I was like, I'm, here's here's how my thought process was like, all right, I'm going to go go to the wine tasting and then I'm going to run in the adult egg hunt. You know, <laughs> it was a bad idea. Anyways, I'm like trying these wines are really good, man. And then I like walk out of there. I was like, holy shit. I hadn't eaten anything. I just had breakfast. And I didn't have any lunch. So I'm oh, like, God, I'm a little. Up. No, I didn't throw up. I was, I was a little buzzed. I was like wobbly and stuff. I'm like 
first of all, I took the the seven year old, and she had to race with the older kids, you know, uh, six and up. And uh, my wife and I were trying to figure out should we have five year old race with the big kids? And mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, I'll take her over and she could race with the. So we, we decided on letting her race, and she didn't get any eggs. She was with the big kids. She was oh. like crying. I didn't get any eggs, you know. Oh no. <laughs> Alita had like. I don't know. She had maybe like 10 eggs. I was like, well, give your sister some eggs, you mm-hmm. know, so split them up and stuff. And then I, I go and, uh, I go and I'm like racing in the, in the adult egg hunt race. Now I'm like, I got this plan. I'm going to head, I'm going to head straight to the back. Cause everyone's going to be stopped, you know, <laughs> in front getting the, I'll get all the ones in the back. Well, I like race out there, man. I'm not as fast as I used to be big surprise, <laughs> but, but I like grab a bunch of eggs. You know, I think I got like three or four, you know, because the other other folks were a lot faster than me. But, mm-hmm. anyways, inside some days you could win like a bottle of wine or wine, a glass of wine or whatever. You know, it's just what I needed was more wine that day. But uh, I wanted a tie dye, but I didn't get one. I ended up with a, a corkscrew with the logo on it. But the wine was good, man. <laughs> yeah, You're, and I went. Home, you... I went home, took a big nap. <laughs> are you a big wine drink, drinker? You're not a big wine drinker, are you? Uh, I. I don't mind it. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Liquor, you know. I like How about my you, Nikki? Uh, Nikki. No, you like I'm actually drink? my mother's side of the family is Italian and I'm like mm-hmm. a, like an it- Italian that doesn't like wine, so I'm I'm Ooh, kind of yeah. a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, scratch that off the Christmas yeah, they, list. They had a couple <laughs> wines that were just like so smooth. I'm like, wow. I cool. wanted to ask you, Aldo, did sure. you watch the uh the two Nicholson movies we were talking about? I no, did. The, the Passenger and Pritzi's mm. Honor. No, yeah. I still haven't recorded. I haven't seen them yet. The Passenger was dreadful. Terrible. Really? <laughs> Terrible. That was uh, uh, Pasolini was the director too, I think, right? Yeah, one uh, of those Italian guys yeah. that ends with Eni. <laughs> there was yeah. no plot at all. It just running aimlessly. I it we stopped it. We put the subtitles on thinking that would help us and we got through it. It sucked. I mean, for Jack Nicholson in his prime, I can't believe he made that movie. It, it's um, highly. We talked lots of football. It. We talked. Who, who's criticizing us? Bobsy just about. came in. <laughs> he Bobsie got most, will... mostly got a lot of dick and pussy for this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Plenty of dick and pussy uh, on this <laughs> show. We talked. We talked. Jay Cutler. We talked. Walter Payton. We talked. Uh, the draft. Yep. Indeed. Miss a little, miss a lot. Is uh is Dan excited for Caleb Williams? Yeah, well, I mean, like, I mean they better not fuck it up and trade. Like and try to outsmart people. We're gonna trade yeah. like, like a Ryan before, Pace move. Yeah, before I was like, Man, we don't you don't have enough picks, he's gotta trade. Now I'm just like, Don't trade that fucking number one pick. You gotta get a quarterback. You better draft you know? Caleb Williams and quit yeah. fucking around. You I'm gave up around. Justin Fields for nothing. Literally nothing. You yeah. remember how we always said that about Greg Olson? That was the yeah. third round pick. We were like, oh, we traded Greg for nothing. We got a sixth round pick. A sixth round pick for Justin yeah. Fields. Maybe a four, but you talk about nothing. So you better not fuck up and, and you draft that quarterback. The draft Steelers, that quarterback. man. Uh, that, that, that relationship with the Steelers is very one sided. <laughs> the, the Steelers yeah. got us for a second round pick. And then they come back out. We, we can only give you a six round pick, Ryan. Yeah, look about it. We, we talked about this last <laughs> week, I think. But look, look at old Steelers that come to Chicago. Marcus Wheaton, yeah. Chase Claypool, yep. Marcus uh, <laughs> Santonio Holmes, yep. Cordell, Cordell Stewart, Cordell Stewart, Merrill Hodge, Merrill Hodge, Merrill Hodge Tim, Tim Worley. Tim Worley. Oh, the really? only one that's worth the fuck is Jeff Graham. Yeah, Jeff Graham. He was Jeff nice. Graham was solid with us, but beyond that, all the old Steelers suck when they come to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They have gotten uh, the better part of the deals, and then the coin flip. You can't forget the coin flip. For Terry, Terry Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Greg. Uh, Greg Gabriel disagrees. He thinks Justin will end up being the starter. I think he. You know, I think I think Fields will end up the season starting. Whether he's going to get 51 percent of the starting snaps or, or snaps, yeah. uh, that remains. Did to you see his jersey number there? No, what is it? He's wearing five. Really? The former Pittsburgh Steeler quarterback Terry Hanratty was number five. Is it is it uh retired? It shouldn't be retired. He wasn't that no, good. no. I'm just saying I don't know why he's not number one. Maybe they have somebody oh. already wearing one, but he's wearing five, and I was just saying that Terry Hanratty 
Mm-hmm. Well, it was Bradshaw's backup a couple of times whenever Joe Gilliam couldn't keep his shit together how, with drugs. How far uh, is Pittsburgh from you, Dan? Uh, four hours. It's not too bad. Maybe four and a half. I've got, I saw the Bears in Pittsburgh there when uh, when Fields played on that Monday night game. John Buffon was there too. Mm. Hey, I find I found the title of that movie, Mickey. It's Sybil. Okay. S I B Y L, and Man, uh, I'll you some, yeah, it, 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 this movie. I mean, I, I'm telling you, this this woman here, she's a psychiatrist. This is her one of her patients, and she, the the psychiatrist is going to leave the business and become a writer, and so she she takes on this one client mm. because she wants to basically make a book out of her experience, which is that she's an actor who is um, in a movie having a extramarital relationship with this actor. Mm. And the actor is married to the director. And so the psychiatrist is like, this is fascinating. I'm going to write a book about this. And so she's basically committing a, a sin in the psychotherapy world. But this chick here, I got to tell you, man, I fell in love with her. I started <laughs> Googling one of the movies she's, she's been in. Uh, let's see if I can freeze it on a good shot of her because she really is. The psychiatrist is, is good looking too, but this woman here, right there, oh my gosh. She's been Color in, me intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> she's been in a bunch of, you know how European movies can be, you know, they're very sexy and she was in one when she just turned 18 where she falls in love with another woman a woman with blue hair and uh i I haven't seen the movie i just saw the preview but it's definitely on my list of movies to watch because the blue haired girl and this girl together oh the clips that i saw of them making love together gotta see that nice have to buy the dvd so anyway sybil is the title of this one right did Woo-hoo! not to go back to Nicholson, but you you said you had watched that other one before, right? Pritzy's Honor, I have yeah. seen. You've seen uh, that, right, I, Tooch? Yeah, it's uh, Angelica Houston. Angelica yeah, she's Houston. so good looking back then. Yeah. I had never watched that movie, and I have to tell you, Kathleen Turner's death was very shocking. Mm-hmm. I was. didn't expect that at all. Yeah. What did you think of so, uh, Joel accent? Gray played the old man, I think, right? Yeah, Joel Gray. Yes. Yeah, Joel Gray. Um, uh, what uh, th- before I answer, uh, before well, before I answer the accent, let me make a quick connection. Sure. Uh, the the shot, the most shocking death I've ever seen in a movie was in To Live and Die in L.A. when William yeah. when Peterson dies. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm mentioning that Peter. because the movie you told me to watch, Mulholland Falls, William Peterson gets thrown down that hill at the beginning. Uh, and they don't even credit him. It, uh, he's in it, and Rob Lowe was in it, and yep. the girl that played in uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest that was the nurse. Fletcher, Louise Fletcher. Yeah, she's in it and got and they didn't credit her either. But that was a good movie that you recommended that Mulholland uh, Falls. But to answer your question, Nicholson's accent didn't bother me. It didn't sound bad. Uh, you know, did you it think took it me, did? No, I, I, it was okay. I, I, it just when he, you know, it took me about twenty minutes to kind of get used to it. You know, because it, it's just so different from his normal voice. He's got such a distinctive yeah. voice. You know, in Chinatown and all these movies where it's almost like a a sneering voice. You know. I can't do impressions, but right. it, it's so cool. And so when he does something so off kilter, like he, like in Princey's Honor, and then in I think it was in the the, the uh, Departed, he also had a thick accent, Italian yeah. accent. That it just whoa. The, the when you mentioned Chinatown, that's what I, with that other film that we we talked about. I mean, he, he's coming off of Chinatown, and he does this other fucking movie. This yeah, movie because, is awful. Uh, that's uh, I, I think the filmmaker now, if I remember, is Antonioni, uh, and he was a big time uh, global director. A lot of actors yeah. wanted to work with him. I forgot what movies he did that make catapulted him to global or, stardom, but that was his motivation for doing that. Jack movie. must not have liked it because you know, you know Ben Mankiewicz, who mm-hmm. works on TCM, Five Easy sure. Pieces, good movie too. Uh, yeah. But on TCM, he tells the story after the film. That Nicholson, whatever the studio was that had the distributor of the film, I forget, right? But Nicholson got into an argument with them, a legal argument, and they sold the rights to that movie, The Passenger, to Nicholson, and he kept it out of print for 30 years. Because they ended up getting they gave him the film to satiate or you know, whatever his lawsuit was to get it to go away. They gave him that film and he kept it out of print for 30 years. 
until Sony bought it from him again in 06, I think they said. And they put it on DVD then. That is wild. That's how bad that movie was. Uh, listen to uh, Rotten Tomatoes, 88% critics loved it, 84% of the audience liked it. Nikki, what do you like about it? What do you think about it? No. Just no. <laughs> God. No. That was that And both was of painful. us are movie buffs. Yeah. So we consider ourselves movie buffs. Hey, by the way, Aldo, if you ever wanted to question if we should be together, you no. know what other you know what film she loves? Loves. Um, it's gotta be good fellas. A Serbian film. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I hadn't talked to her since 05. I didn't know she also liked the Serbian film. Oh, no. We, bond, we bonded over that. We bonded over it. Like, we'll have to fuck while we're watching it. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is it What is it called? It's, they, they critics called it baby porn, was it? Am Newborn right porn. Newborn, Newborn, Newborn porn. porn. Newborn porn. Yeah. Oh, we said that together. That was creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, We're going on a list man. somewhere. We're going on a list. <laughs> this, gosh, that's so weird movie. I can't believe anybody oh, other no. than Dan Aguirre likes that movie. <laughs> yep. Uh, the past meant to be. Listen to some of these critics' reviews. A bleak, a bleak and moving drama with reflective performances, especially from Jack Nicholson. It's one of those very risky pieces of virtuosity, which tend inevitably to distract the mind to questions of how it's done. But it was still so beautiful. Michelangelo Antonioni. They, they, the critics sound a bit pretentious, don't they? <laughs> very. I, I wanted to look. I wanted to like this film. It's Jack in his prime. I love Jack Nicholson. He's like arguably the best actor of his generation. Or at mm -hmm. least he's in the top five. He's in the picture. He's in the team photo. And, I mean, he was the highest paid actor for a while, right? So, yeah. it, and his career, and, and I wanted to like it. We tried, we, it took two different viewings for us to finish it. They said we started it over and put the subtitles on. Oh, my God. It just, it was immensely disappointing. I, I, I'd really like for you to watch it just to see if you can contradict I will. me. I promise you I will because I it's been on my list of movies to watch, so. Uh, and if I happen to love it, we'll be talking about it next week. I would love if you do like it. I want you to sell me on it. Like, what am I not getting from it? I I tried. I looked at Wikipedia, and one of the things it was saying is, I don't want to give you a spoiler, but Try. just a small a, a plot point. He changes his identity. A guy dies, and he takes. He's so tired of his profession. He's a reporter that he he takes the other guy's identity, changes his passport. So I guess there you can look in depthly into that and think, oh, this guy, how how bad do you hate yourself to want to change your identity? But the movie doesn't explore that. Like that's what it was saying that that was one of the themes, but it didn't explore that. It just it rambles without a plot. And your a couple of scenes, you're like, why did they show that? That had nothing to do with the story and didn't advance anything. I, man, I I wanted to like it. It sucked. It it was immensely terrible. Well, that's like uh, this week's Curb Your Enthusiasm. I didn't get some of the storylines. Like I liked, zippers. I like, I laughed. What, what was going on with the zipper? Larry couldn't close his yeah, the zipper. zipper with the, the zipper, I did. But the thing with like Leon getting mad over the herpes comment when he was talking about shingles. That was and he's funny. Like, and Leon was like, "Fuck that motherfucker!" <laughs> <laughs> I laughed. I laughed out loud for that. And then the stuff with Springsteen was pretty funny too. I thought, you know, yeah, it was. But I just felt like maybe the payoff when they go see him he, he's got COVID. bruce springsteen gets COVID from larry david and so they, they go to his house and they're talking to him through a glass uh i thought that could have been a little funnier you know they should have brought this guy in because he makes it get in that ass larry don't worry <laughs> <laughs> i mean that, he's the, the star episode. of the show yeah so how do you think the season and the series is going to end because i got a theory Oh, I mean, he's good. I assume it's the Georgia trial. Right. They, I think they're going to find him guilty. He's, he's, he's going to go to jail just like Seinfeld. They left and went to jail at the end of Seinfeld. So Larry yeah. goes to jail. Yeah. That's a I, I thought the floor, fuck, uh, the floor fucking thing was funny, too. I yeah, thought. that was funny. There's no doubt about it. You're a floor fucker, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, you're I a fan of Kerb? I've, I've seen a few episodes through the years, but I haven't had HBO. Uh, for most of the years. I, like I said, I have two kids, so, you know, I'm broke. So <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. What are you going to say, Dan? 
Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I was just, I was, <laughs> I forgot my, when I was listening to her, sorry. Uh, about the, uh, the, the maid, uh, fucking on the floor, fucking on the floor. Yeah, I don't know. He's, a, you're a floor fucker, Larry. Oh, I was, I knew, uh, I, I, fuck, what was I saying? Uh, he was talking to Cheryl, his ex-wife in the script. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, not in real life, but I love the scene where, like, He's there talking to his ex-wife, and he admits to her that, yeah, we fucked on, fucked on the floor because I didn't want to talk to you. I didn't want to. He's like, I didn't want to embrace you. I didn't want to hear what you had to say. I mean, uh, I thought that was pretty funny. It, it just it, to me, it just seemed, and maybe I'm I'm totally off on this. Uh, I'm almost doubting myself. Is that some of the gags weren't taken all the way? It's like he's he's got all these ideas, and he's trying to fit them all into these final episodes like like the floor fl- fucking and and uh not wanting to embrace after having sex with his wife or girlfriend and stuff i, I just thought there could have been a payoff and the restaurant owner who got a c grade and so i guess in california you got to post this, the grade and, and then he uh, larry catches him uh changing it to an a and breaking right. the law but basically I, I didn't think there was a payoff to that either but maybe there was I, well the floor he, fucking joke expanded off of that because yeah, they got to right. see because of the floor fucking. But remember, at the end of the episode, he's trying to get a hold of that guy. He's like, oh, I don't want to read his book. He finally mm-hmm. reads the book, and uh, he doesn't get him in time. And like the guy's giving everybody COVID. He's coughing on him. And he's like, let's everyone take a big <laughs> breath together. You know, like, I, I thought that was funny. You know what? I didn't understand that until you just explained that he was giving everybody COVID on the bus. Okay. Yeah. And it's all because of Larry, because Larry didn't call him into it. He's like, I have to read his fucking book first. He reads the book, and he decides to hurry up and call him, but he misses him, and the guy's giving everybody COVID because Larry didn't call him. Okay, well, it, it not all makes sense, and so the joke's on me for being too stupid to get it to the initial time. <laughs> I need to stop uh, multitasking when I watch some of these shows. Um, speaking of that, uh, the uh, Game of Thrones season two is coming. I know you guys. Yep. Uh, I, well, I don't know if Nikki doesn't watch it, but I know Dan is not a Game of Thrones fan. Neither am I. Oh, see, I see. I love this woman. I love this woman. <laughs> There's so much fucking and pussy licking yeah. and. Titty Can I tell you something, Aldo? Can I interrupt you? A lot of this sex. is something you're going to like. I haven't admitted this to anybody, and I don't want to embarrass Nikki, but I think I'm going to tell you. I got thrush from eating her asshole. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> so you want to tell us more? <laughs> I'm taking some pill they give girls who have like yeast infection. <laughs> and I've got to take a, 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 a prescription mouthwash. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to get rid of this shit. I told you he is a filthy, filthy whore. I told you that. We are yeah. filthy whores. I told you. I was. I mean, I've been eating ass from way back, but it, it gave me thrush. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Because I'm special. I'm special. Her ass yeah. is like it's got a skull and crossbones on that motherfucker. I mean, I should keep my dick out of there. <laughs> no way. No way. Joke. Did you guys no consider doing a a porno movie together? I'm not attractive enough to be in a porn. She can pull it off. No, I can. no, 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 no. No. It's about no. the maybe, performance. Nah, maybe ten years ago, but not now. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, there, there's an audience for any type. Of you know couples and fetishes. I'm too pale. I don't want everybody saying, "Look at that polar bear, fucking this girl." <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we put you in a bodysuit of some sort. Yeah, and maybe give me my friend Antoine's penis. <laughs> Antoine's dick's like 11 inches, so I'll take that. Have you heard of this Nicky? That he's that's actually friend? one dick I've never seen. Just the one. <laughs> just one dick I've seen. It was that one. It was that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious unfortunately right <laughs> right <laughs> right no i never got a chance to see that dick uh, Cl- cliff says that he'd watch the uh porno if you guys put it up on uh you porn I-, I really think you should consider that i would love <laughs> to do the editing that was something <laughs> seth rogan said on zach and mary make a porno he's like anybody wants to watch anybody else fuck he's like I, I, he's like i would watch rosie o'donnell getting fucked stupid if you had it <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> fuck it i'd watch it <laughs> that is hilarious um 
So I can't talk you guys into doing a porno, huh? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, no I don't think so. What, what, what about, let me write the script and then react to the script first. <laughs> oh my before... God. That's a Serbian film right there. <laughs> there That's a the fucking plot for a Serbian film. We're in a Serbian film. I knew it. I knew it. This is a trap. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Tucci Always and I a trap. can start working on the script tomorrow, okay? Yep. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Tucci has a lot of experience at erotica. Yeah. I like that. Tooch was Ron Jeremy's <laughs> double. <laughs> Did you know that, Nikki? The hedgehog. <laughs> hedgehog Junior. <laughs> Jer- Ron, Ron, is Ron was... Jeremy gone to jail yet? Has that been adjudicated? Yes, I think he is in jail. <laughs> oh wow! Doesn't he have like narcolepsy or something? Yeah, he he was falling asleep during yeah. the portions of the trial. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's why Tooch was the stand-in. There he got is. There he is. If he got tired, Tooch would come in and start fucking. <laughs> you ever, uh, Tooch, you ever seen uh, Ron Jeremy's The Size of His Penis? Mm-mm. You never saw any of his movies? I did. I don't remember, though. It was a long time yeah. ago. So it's a fucking 1970s, 80s penis. Size. Well, let's, we don't no. have to show that on the screen now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm YouTube thinking, will I, kick us off. YouTube will kick us off. I'm just thinking if you're really a stand-in for Ron Jeremy, yeah. then you got a lot to brag about, buddy. <laughs> you know, the guy, I think I mentioned before, but the, back, you know, when I first started masturbating, that was like the thing. I'd had all these 80s porn VHS tapes, you know, you'd <laughs> sneak and watch and the mom and dad were gone, you know. But mm-hmm. the actor that was in all of those porns wasn't Ron Jeremy. The ones I had was a guy named Peter North. He was in every fucking 80s porn I had. I was like, this Peter North guy is my fucking hero. Look at the way he slays this pussy. I, I want to do that one day. <laughs> I, I, I remember on the Howard Stern show, those guys, uh, Howard's production assistants, thought he was a god, Peter North. Uh, really? Because he, yeah, because he um, had an incredible capacity mm-hmm. for throwing gallons and gallons of semen. And, he, you know, they would say, come on her tits. He I didn't times. know they talked about it on Stern though. I hadn't heard it. Yeah. When, when, yeah. Wow. Um, who were the, who were the two guys that were always together? Uh, Sal, the stockbroker, and the other guy. Yeah. Um, the was, one who who's gay now. Is he gay now? Are you serious? Well, the, there's two of them. The Richard is isn't Richard gay? Or, Richard. But the other Richard's the guy from St. Louis or Missouri. Right. But there's an, right. there's another guy that used to fuck women that's gay now. I can't think of his name. They they oh. have a they have a thing going on right now that Tan Mom wants to fuck him and he they're asking him if he could fuck a woman now that he's been with men the last like ten years and he he says he could pull it off. Oh, I remember that character vaguely. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of his name, but yeah, the the, the Tan Mom's one of the Rat Pack or Whack Pack or whatever the fuck you know. Yeah. Well, it was it was Richard the stockbroker. I mean, the yeah, uh, Sal the stockbroker and Richard who used to talk about Peter North. Uh, often and just they were like i thought they you know took down their jesus christ photos and put put up <laughs> and it was really He's worthy weird. of that that admiration <laughs> yeah but you know i'd keep that to myself if i'm on no uh, terrestrial radio and millions of people are listening to it <laughs> right i don't know <laughs> Uh, Mr. Shorty says, "Aldo, the fine princess, three hundred dollars per hour to use my name." Did you read that? No, I did not, Mr. Shorty. <laughs> You're gonna have to buy. Give him three hundred dollars back that he gave you for pissing on your. <laughs> oh my god! He peed on your. Pr- yeah, he pissed on his lot. His. Uh, we were in Chicago, had a party, and the other Dan pissed, and Aldo's wife saw it on the like the the uh, the doorbell cam. Saw him pissing all over their lawn, and she was so pissed off. She was pissed off. No pun intended. <laughs> That's right. Oh my god! And then uh, he sent us a three hundred dollars gift certificate to one of the f- uh, finest steakhouses in Chicago. And so we go over there to eat, and my wife says, "You know what? Ask him if he wants to come over and shit on her lawn." <laughs> 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 we we can, we can come here more often. <laughs> That's great. Oh lord! Uh, so. Um, guys, it is 15 minutes left. What do you guys want to talk about? Uh, Tooch, what do you got? Uh, what do you want to share with us? Uh, yeah, like Dan says, I'll be moving soon. Uh, April 26th, bought a house nice. with the kids. Congratulations again. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. It's got a ginormous backyard, though. So I got to get a riding mower, or I don't know. Mm-hmm. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna 
you know, push the mower around or get a riding one. So push I mowed it. for the first time of the season today, actually. All right. Opening day for me mowing the lawn today. It took like three <laughs> hours because the grass was high. Ah. Are yeah. you uh, are you in need of any furniture? <sighs> Man, I don't know. Probably, but I mean, how would I get it? You know, that's a long drive for me. I I could drive it up there. I got a couple of things. I'll send you some pictures. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So we nice. can meet up in. Uh, we can oh, meet in. in uh, good time. Yeah, we can meet at the gambling casino over. Oh, yeah. the, or take Aldo to the Field of Dreams field that you went to. Oh man. That's oh, awesome. that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yep. Uh, Nikki, what's going on with you? Uh, are you? Um, have you picked out a ring and all that stuff yet? Yeah, we already got it. Yeah, we already got it. All right. Nice. We already nice. got him, and cool. um, I am moving in with him in oh. early June. I love it. Nice. Love it. Our, and, our rings are the same. She picked them out. We literally have the same ring. Of course, hers is a baby version of that. It was. It's like in men's size. It's like a four or something. But you know. But we have the same ring. She wanted us to have the the same ring, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. Nice. And uh, Nikki, of course, you know that Dan loves cats. Do you love pussy as much as he does? I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Um, so how many cats do you have? It's four, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love that, man. If you're going to get a cat, you got to get at least two. And so once you got two, cause you had five at one point, right? You lost. Yeah. One or yeah. Aztec's mom died last year. And he, was he in that picture that I had? Let me see. Yeah. It's me holding him as a baby. Aww. He just turned 12 on Saturday, by the way. Well, I didn't want to play the video. I want to show the picture. Just turned 12, huh? Yeah, he turned 12 on Saturday. Does Nikki mm -hmm. like cats? Yeah. Yes, I do. I love cats. She just said she likes pussy. <laughs> I know. That's what I said. Well, she meant it both oh, ways. Damn. She meant it both ways. <laughs> both ways. Keep, keep up, John. <laughs> well, I was just, you know, thinking with my dirty mind. <laughs> <laughs> As you are prone to do. <laughs> um, Dan, what's going on with you, brother? Oh, I'm on vacation this week, at least not from radio, but from 911. And that is, oh my God, I've worked four straight 76 hour weeks. Mm -hmm. So to be off from that, it just feels like I won the lottery, even though I'm just getting my standard pay rate, but that's okay. And, uh, you know, her kids, uh, we planned it because her kids are on, uh, her kids are in 12th and 7th grade, respectively, and they were on spring break this week mm -hmm. and they were spending time with her dad. So that freed her up. So I, I got the vacation the same week. So we're spending a week together. And it's kind of like, a, well, let's see how we fucking interact together, you know, because it's been a long time. You know, we yeah. we spent we spent a lot of time together, 97, 8, 9. And, but that was a long time ago. And, and we've spent a lot of time since we reconnected, too. But this mm -hmm. has been constant, and it's it's been great. Am it's I, been great. It's yeah. been great, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Love it. Love it. I uh, was so happy. You know, I, if I'm going to lose Dan to anyone, I want to lose him to somebody like you, Nikki. Oh, yeah, well, thank you so much. That's so sweet. I hope. Now, again, I don't want to impose here, Aldo. So, like, again, you can tell me off air. You can tell me on air. I, I'd like to, again, I know you all are probably going to the London game, mm -hmm. but maybe oh, we wow. could still come out and you could meet her, you know, in the fall. Like, I, I, But, again, I'm not trying to say, let me stay you at your house, London? motherfucker. I would love that. And, to, yeah, Donna and I have talked about it. So we see, we'll see. we see when the schedule comes out. We'd like nice. to make that trip. So, Damn. Yeah. And, Tooch, yeah. you went to London. You went yeah. to the London game. Yeah. I, I, want, I, I haven't been to the London game. I've been to uh, uh, England quite a few times. So. I thought you went and stayed with uh, George when you went I, over. Yeah, he took me to Birmingham City uh, football game. Oh, you oh, didn't watch I, the Bears? I thought you went for the Bears. I my wish, bad. yeah. Um, well, Aldo, so here, goes, here goes my pitch then. Of course, the schedule's not out. And I know you probably won't go to any other games other than London if you go to London. All right. But, again, her family, she had a family in Jacksonville. So I was thinking – because I, I talked to Ron. I was like, if Aldo doesn't go and I only need two tickets, he'll sell them to me at face value. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, Ron, you don't have a connection to Jacksonville or anything. Maybe I can get the Jaguar tickets. Whatever day that ends up being, I don't know. But uh, 
maybe we could do that and she can meet you and stuff. But I mean, that's on you, man. We'll we'll work it out. Absolutely. I'm dying to meet Nikki. So yeah, it'll, it'll be a blast. I feel so popular. You are popular. <laughs> I feel so popular. Is, uh, is Nikki bringing some cats into this relationship too? Yes, I'm bringing one cat. <laughs> so he's gonna be back up to five i'm sorry what <laughs> that's great I'm, I'm sure he doesn't have a problem with that not to mention uh, i'm not taking any jabs in any previous females uh she's like i'm not doing all the cleaning now either like it's a team it's a teamwork thing so yeah. yes like i did all the shit before like all of it the inside the fucking lawn the job i wore was like i'm working myself to death and i'm still i'm washing dishes for a meal i didn't even eat eat uh you know it was like they cooked without me i um in my relationship i say that i do all the cleaning but i do none of it <laughs> does uh, just, does lie. dan dan get along with nikki's pussy cat <laughs> i think so <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of the kitty monty Oh, Monty, Monty, as in the full Monty. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But tell them the kid. It was because of the kid. Well, tell them the story. Oh, um, my youngest. Uh, when we first got this cat years ago, um, when we went to the, to it, we adopted him from a shelter. Or her, we adopted her from a shelter, mm -hmm. and um, we they we they they have the cats like out there, and you can come and like pet different cats and meet the cats and stuff. And this one cat came up to us and was kind of loving on us. And I, and I asked one of the workers, I said, what's this cat's name? And she said, Armani, like the designer. Yeah, and, nice. and my youngest heard that wrong. And he said, did she say Monty? And then after that, it just became Monty. So it's, That's great. Yeah. Story. It has nothing to do with David Montgomery. Let's just go ahead and point that out. <laughs> <laughs> He's a traitor. Uh, I don't mean may he die it. in Detroit. No, I'm kidding. Oh I'm kidding. <laughs> there was a comedian in the in the eighties, maybe two you remember, named Monty something. Monty, you know. Mm. Anyway, that, that's what I thought immediately. Anyways, uh Tooch, can you stay a little longer? Dad can go all night long. And, and Nikki agrees. Uh so can you guys <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yes. Can you guys go a little longer? Because uh, I'm I'm burnt out. Well, if you're ready to go, we can go, man. That's fine. Oh, well, it's up to Tooch if he wants to continue to, uh, riding the plane. Uh, I'm all right. I, I, I'm a little tired, but... Uh, well, let's just go right. then. Let's go. It, it's a good show. We'll leave on a high That's note. That's great. Yeah. We'll leave on a high note. I like that. Um, Nikki, I, I I can't wait to see you. Give you a great big hug. Yeah. And thank well, you for being well, such a great sport. When are you guys oh. coming to town? Well, I don't know for sure because, again, you got to get flights and tickets and everything yeah. else, but... Hopefully, we, we want to see one game this season because she's never been to, to the city. So yeah. I'd like to take her to Chicago and Man. and and have her meet Aldo and go. You know, I, I always love going to Soldier Field. It's it's you know I, I'm I'm I waste too much money going to Soldier Field. This <laughs> I, I was there recently, right? Oh, I, did I tell that story? I don't think so. When I, I was there recently, uh, I took the girls to the Museum of Science and Industry, but I was sick. Yeah, I was really sick and I lost my wallet and I was like, damn it, I gotta go to Lost and Found. But someone yeah, yeah, had, they, they returned the wallet. Someone returned my wallet. But I was really sick, man. I had like the flu and stuff. So I didn't have a good time in Chicago. But uh uh I'll come out maybe if you guys come out, if you guys are flying in. Yeah, That'd be great. Uh, yeah. all things equal. I just thought it would be a, a cool tie-in for where a family lived in Jacksonville. And the Jaguars mm -hmm. play in Chicago this season. Again, it may end up being a fucking Thursday night game and not yeah. possible. But and that, that might be the game where they go to London. Who knows? Because uh, yeah. one of their home games is going to be in London. So it may not even be possible. You might be at the Jacksonville game in London. But from the outside looking in, I thought that would be a cool connection for her first game. Yeah, I yeah. know that Jacksonville is playing a game in Europe, so it could be that Bears game. Um, but I, I thought that I read that there were that was two separate games. The Bears would play one, mm. and Jackson would. Yeah, I think Jacksonville play. plays every year because they have problems getting attendance down there. Yeah, exactly. So they take a shit ton of money to go to Europe and 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 overcompensate. Like they get paid enough. It's like two games in Jacksonville, what they would earn. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, well, uh, this is a great place to leave it. Uh, Nikki, when I see you, got great big hugs for you. Uh, please expect your edible panties and your uh, <laughs> uh, penis pump uh, in the mail very soon. 
I'll get the address from Dan. And uh, Dan, no work tonight, so you guys have hours and hours of sex coming up. You excited? Yeah, uh, but she's got. Joke. She also wants me to watch that. I, I've never seen it. A 1993 or four. 94. 94. Uh, it was on ABC. The Stand. Oh yeah, King. yeah. That's multi parts, isn't it? So, like, yeah, I bought the DVD on eBay for like six bucks, but yeah, I've never I, seen it. So I, I told her I'd watch it with her while we were on this break. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's well done. You know, T TCM Turner Classic Movies had a thing with some of the best uh, ABC TV. I saw that the boy in the plastic bubble, and yeah. I finally watched. I finally watched <laughs> Sayers and Brian Piccolo. Brian song. Yes, yeah, yes. I finally watched Brian song. I should have texted it, you to tell you it was on. Yeah, my yeah, wife, Mike North. Mike North to, uh, uh, on X talked about it, so I, I watched it because of Mike North. I saw that. My wife told me, hey, Brian's song is playing tonight on TCM. I want to see it. I was, like, mm. shocked. And so we did see it, and she cried her ass off. Holy shit. Man. It was cool that so many of the real bears were on there, too. Yeah. yeah. Abe Gibran. who Ed Obradovich. Uh, Ed Obradovich. Who uh, yells Gibran. nail on WGN every week after the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, who else? Butkus was there. Uh, Ditka, it was on the credits, but I don't remember seeing any shots of him. I didn't uh, either. And then there were a couple of other guys. But, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty well done. I think the movie, frankly, I think the movie's a little overrated, you know, because it does have that TV movie feel yeah. at ABC. It's low budget and stuff. Uh, but it it works, you know. If you get my wife to cry at a football movie, that's pretty pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, uh, I, en I enjoyed it. It was a little and, short, a little and short. they had yeah, right. And they had Duel on the uh, Steven Spielberg Dennis Weaver movie. Did you see it? That one? No, I didn't. I didn't see that. I don't even know what that is. Okay, so Steven Spielberg is hired by Paramount, one of the studios. And so I'm pretty sure this was his first directing feature. And it's Dennis Weaver plays a guy who is making a cross-country drive back home. And this fucking truck starts fucking with him and backing yeah. into his car, trying to drive him off the highway and stuff. And he's driving through desert now. And every time he stops, you know, to you know, try to get help and stuff. He's toward some way. The people at the diner don't want to fucking talk to him. They all look suspicious. He's fucking going paranoid. He gets back into his car. The fucking truck is following him again. It's really well made. I mean, there's hardly any dialogue. It's a crazy it's movie. It's crazy. You see it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It's not bad, right? Yeah, yeah. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah. So uh, that if you get a chance, Dan, watch that. Toots, you've seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching it in the 70s when I was a kid and being like a little mm -hmm. freaked out. Yeah. There's, you know, one shot that I loved in that movie. Uh, I, I'll offer up a spoiler here. The, the truck crashes at one point and the wheels, slow, as it's on its side, the wheels slowly come to a stop as they turn. And then there's a cut. Spielberg has like oil dripping from the side and it gives the impression that this truck is actually dying because it, it became it's a person itself it was really well done beautifully yeah, done crazy. by Spielberg that yeah. reminds me of something I know we're wrapping up but we we all have talked about the Stephen King John Carpenter movie uh, Christine mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. if it's real but I saw some shit where they were saying yeah. Rob Zombie was going to remake it and he's going to ruin it let me just say yeah. he's going to ruin it you know, I like Rob Zombie a lot, but uh, he's not that great of a filmmaker. Maybe no. he's made one I like or two The Devil's movies. Rejects, and that's it. Uh, nothing yeah. else he's ever made, I enjoy. Yeah. Agreed. Wow. Oh. Uh, if, if, uh, real quick, if uh, we, <laughs> I sound like the old Phil and Shane days. Real quick, real quick. <laughs> if uh, if uh, we do come to Chicago and you come out to Chicago, can we get yeah. you to go to the fucking game this year? I would love that. Yeah, I All think right. so. I love that. Yeah. There you go. Well, we should do it. Go to the game. I now, went last, to just last announced game that. Was, uh, like in the 80s. That was the last time I went to a game. See, that you've been in town been. numerous I times know. when I we were going to the game. Go, I know. But you've been to Bears Cap a couple of times at least. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We went to, I went with Aldo one year. I went with my yep. uh, my family one year. Yep. Mm -hmm. Tucci and I are, are driving yeah. to, to camp, and I tell them, sure. all right, you're the co pilot, so give me directions. <laughs> We drove 10 miles out of the way. Yeah, because we were, we were talking so much. We were laughing and talking. And stuff. <laughs> we missed our that. exit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, fun. guys. I'm going to get some rest. Uh, enjoy the stand. 
yeah. all six hours. Are you going to do a binge tonight and watch it all? Uh, nice. Probably. Well, I got to take a cat to the vet in the morning at nine. So maybe uh, for his routine shots. So maybe mm-hmm. I'll stay up all night if I can. Otherwise, we'll we'll get it in, in multi you know sessions. You got some plowing to do, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I you got things you. to do. I got things to do. <laughs> you got things to do. Excellent. Uh, all right, uh, we will all, all right. see you here next week. Nikki, you're welcome back anytime you want. By the way, oh, well, thank you, thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, to meet you. I'm really happy for you guys. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you. Amazing. Yep. Quick programming announcement. There is no draft on tap tomorrow, but we'll be back with something on, on Thursday. I don't know. Well, Tucci and I are yep. talking. I know he's got weekend sports betting tips coming up. Yep. Friday, uh, Final Four talk. Yeah. Anthony and I have been red hot, man. It's like baseball. Anthony's like 15 and four his last few. I, I've been like, I don't know, 25 and 10 by last. That's how you win money. 35. Yep. So, hey, did by you way, see- Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, did you see the Sox are selling a fifteen dollar milkshake over there? Wow. Well, they they probably got about fifteen people in the stadium. That franchise yeah. is dying. Man, dying well, the, 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 it's a big ass thing. Things. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's huge. The picture I saw of it. Damn, nice. I know they're also selling like fifty dollar tickets that include a hamburger, a hot dog, popcorn, soda, and stuff. Because there's nobody going to the to the park and so they're they're coming up with these economy deals to get people to go so the 15 dollars shake is is i'm I'm sure for uh the season ticket holders who don't show up right (laughs) um geez i was gonna say something too uh you announced something recently oh life magazine is coming yeah 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 yep and i I don't think we're gonna be working on it because uh uh somebody resurrected a a a a star uh or something uh how, so a famous person like is going to be producing, and I think Harmon Media is going to be producing. We might be doing a little bit of work on it. We'll still be doing like the life specials, mm-hmm. you oh, know, cool. like life Jimmy Carter or whatever. You know, we'll still be doing those. But uh, uh, yeah, the actual life magazine will be coming back. Well, if you're doing After Jimmy Carter, years. don't expect to start working on it for like another. Well, we, it's already years. done because he was he's been dying for six months. I know he's been in hospice for like over we, twelve months. We, we had it done you? like fourteen months ago. Here's something really cold, and I I shouldn't say it, but I will ask you the question. Okay. Who do you think dies first, Jimmy Carter, or Virginia McCaskey? Ooh, you are a sick God, man. That's, I know. I gotta that's go. That's why with I Carter. love you. Virginia seems indestructible. Like, yeah. Well, so yeah. does President Carter. Though. Yeah, I guess sure. so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been saying this for the last few years. I think they're yeah. really trying desperately to win one for Virginia. Yeah. And George Mann should talk her into let's do it the right way. Let's have sustainable yep. success. Let's break everything down. So hold on for two yeah. or three more years. And so hopefully they'll win a Super Bowl this point, year although. and then she, and then she passes away. <laughs> I, I'm excited now for some Caleb Williams. You know, they think though. Yeah, I'm I think they got like well, we'll at least break that Charlie O'Donnell record, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Twelve <laughs> touchdown passes. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna uh, isolate that bear. Was it Char- Charlie? Uh, what was his name? Uh, already. Charlie wasn't Brown. It? No, I'm just kidding. No, uh, wasn't it an Irish name? Yeah. Let me see. Uh, Char- Charlie O'Rourke. <laughs> Charlie O'Rourke. Charlie O'Donnell. Of how Charlie did I O'Rourke, forget? 11 passing touchdowns by a rookie, 1942. It was 42? Where, where yeah. was our, our favorite quarterback, Sid Luckman, in 42 at the war? Yeah, was he fighting have, yeah. in the war? We must not have had him uh, as a rookie, you know? He must have been fighting in the war. That's yeah. the only reason we didn't have Sid. Yep. Dan, that uh, tongue of yours looks like it's like crocodile skin. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I don't. I, you're making me... Uh, Gay for Cutler? Is that what it's trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Jay's got right. wonderful hair. <laughs> it does. Oh, my gosh. What a, I would kill for that hair now. Uh, all right. Time to go. Goodbye, everybody. Go. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Good Great night, show, everybody. guys. <laughs> Later.